Ladies and gentlemen, we're live. We're about to kick off the four-hour transmission. It's hard to believe, depending on how you slice it, that we're only, what, 12 to 11 days. If you count Fox, we're 12 days out, uh, counting Election Day. But if you look at uh, just the calendar, it's 11 days until it kicks off. We have the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer joining us today with breaking news. Uh, we have Roger Stone, Larry Nichols, and so much more. Huge breaking news today. But first, I'd like to kick the transmission off with an extremely powerful John Bowen report that cuts right to the heart of the matter. Knock on your door. Could it be an illegal alien canvassing your neighborhood, begging you to vote for Hillary Clinton, the criminal candidate that will fight for the 750,000 illegals under DACA that has already been struck down by the Supreme Court? The propaganda shills at the Washington Post report, quote, four years after the DACA program was launched, many of the beneficiaries are still in a kind of limbo, unsure about whether their status would be renewed under a president Trump and concern that their family members could be deported. The uncertainty was underscored earlier this year when the U.S. Supreme Court let stand a federal court injunction. I will do what I can as president. I'm hoping if we win back the Senate and we win the White House again, the Republicans are going to see the error of their ways and quit using immigrants to divide our country and quit taking the kind of mean-spirited actions that they do. You know, I was the first person to call out Donald Trump. I said, basta, enough of this prejudice and paranoia and the kind of language that he uses. So, and quit. Using immigrants to divide our country. President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton couldn't even help the people they were attempting to illegally protect. The American Constitution and the 4-4 vote at the Supreme Court put a stop to that. Or maybe that knocking at your door is the Pentagon demanding their money back with interest. The LA Times reported short of troops to fight in Iraq and Afghanistan a decade ago, the California National Guard enticed thousands of soldiers with bonuses of 15,000 or more to re-enlist and go to war. Now the Pentagon is demanding the money back. Nearly 10,000 soldiers, many of whom served multiple combat tours, have been ordered to repay large enlistment bonuses and slapped with interest charges, wage garnishments, and tax liens if they refuse. After audits revealed widespread overpayments by the California Guard at the height of the war's last decade, roughly $30 million needs to be paid back. Meanwhile, the Pentagon's black budget, taxpayer money, fueling the unconstitutional COG shadow government rose from 52.6 billion in 2013 to 59 billion in 2015. Or maybe that person knocking on your door is an Obamacare rep who stopped by to tell you that your premiums have gone up by at least 25%, warning you to be prepared when your medications have to be switched because the health insurance companies are jumping overboard from the Titanic that is the Affordable Care Act. One fix that would drive premiums down. Look, once again, there's no sense in which this has to be fixed. The law's working as, as designed. Well, whoever it is, you should probably exit your home from a back door and get out there and get in that early vote. Because at least that vote will put a stop to this bureaucratic liberal madness, right? Early voter Lisa Howlett reported Republican straight ticket was highlighted. However, the Clinton cane box was also highlighted. I tried to go back and change and could not get it to work. Shandy Clark also reported, I had a family member that voted this morning and she voted straight Republican. She checked before she submitted and the vote had changed to Clinton. Is it any wonder why Hillary Clinton is soaring in all of the fake polls while her VP candidate can only attract an audience of 30 to his rally? While Trump and Pence bring in tens of thousands, the entire machine is rigged, not just the voting booths, the entire damnation that is our federal government, top to bottom. It's the great American screw job. And just in time for Election Day, the scum that has risen to the top of the globalist-owned and taxpayer-funded bureaucracy want you to know just how much they really loathe you, America. John Bound for Influence.com. It has become a giant circus to distract us from the fact that our entire future is being stolen. We'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now only 11 days out. 
and my head is swimming with the possibilities, with the probabilities, with the different developments. Wow, the Democrats and their operatives are promising to burn down the United States if somehow Trump gets in. Hillary plans to accelerate the deindustrialization and the balkanization along racial lines uh, in that entire divide and conquer program. If she gets in across the world, people are fighting back against world government and against the tyranny. It is an amazing time to be alive. We have so much here to go over. Wow. So much here to break down today. All over the United States, reports are flooding in, and people are taking photos of it as well, of where their votes are being flipped. But Texas is a major focal point. And driving into work today, uh, I saw one polling place that had a line about 200 feet long out the door. And I've tweeted that out at Real Alex Jones on Twitter. And that's what Texas election uh, officials are seeing is record breaking turnout and quote, it's all for Trump, black, white, Hispanic, uh, Christian, Jewish, even Muslim, you name it. Trump has come out after Drudge Report linked to several of our articles detailing it in the last two days and his warning of vote flipping on machines. People are not happy, big lines, what is going on? Uh, also an amazing video just showing hypocrisy video, rude CNN reporter asked Trump why he's taking time off and not campaigning hard. He's broken all records, on average six stops a day, eight yesterday, and is set to have seven today, where he speaks up to an hour per visit. It's, the stamina is just unprecedented. But in inversion world, Trump's a racist, he has no stamina, uh, he, he, he wants to bankrupt the country, he's a criminal, he's a sexual predator, no charges of it, no claims until now. Meanwhile, we know who Bill Clinton is. They blame him being a Russian agent, that it's all on Clinton. Just amazing. That clip is coming up. He just blows her away. Uh, Podesta, it gets really good. The latest data dump from WikiLeaks, from Podesta, he says, who told Hillary she could use a private email? Whole thing is effing insane, he said. Tell me who did it, and that person needs to be drawn and quartered. That means you have your guts pulled out and ripped out, and then... Two horses are tied to your arms and legs, and they rip you in four pieces. Now, that's the guy that's been involved covering up for her. Serious felony every time you do that, not just with classified material. With classified, it gets even worse. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you snuck on a military base and stole a secret document out of it, you could get the death penalty. And the point is, they are applying it that way to everybody else. Trump promises New Deal for Black America. We've got the clip where he breaks that down. Meanwhile, guess what's in WikiLeaks? They talk about how David Brock thinks black people are stupid. Look at that creature. I mean, I, uh, anybody that grows a fake Einstein haircut to make you think they're smart. But by the way, liberals see an Einstein haircut, they bow down. It, it, liberals are all about costumes and festooning themselves with BS. Meanwhile, in the email... They talk about how David Brock thinks black people are stupid. Leftist controllers hate everybody, folks. I'd love to just say they're going for black people. No, they want you all poor, under their control, period. It's in the emails. They want you dumb. They want you stupid. They want you under their control. They want you in debt. It's a form of slavery. Meanwhile, New WikiLeaks, Clinton campaign circulated Paul Ryan relative as possible Supreme Court pick. Mm, wonder why old blue eyes is like that. Ex department directive, a department employee, everyone since sensitive info to private emails under Secretary Clinton. They go on to say, honestly, she just did it, so we changed our policy and did the same thing. That's how it works. Meanwhile, Hillary uh, aide rushes to her side to help her climb a step. We have photos and video of her clearly falling down, beginning to fall down again and having to be helped because she starts to have one of the little minor seizures, little baby seizures. Meanwhile, get ready for civil unrest. I mentioned this survey finds that most Americans are concerned about election violence, and a big index of tweets and Facebook posts by liberals shows that they're all, basically, almost all of them saying they're going to get very, very violent. Well, let me tell you something. I catch anybody trying to burn down a house with people in it or shooting at police or firefighters or anything, I'm going to defend this republic. I'm fed up with terrorists. 
I'm fed up with scum. I'm fed up with people and, and firing globalists like Soros trying to destabilize this country, and I'm done. But don't worry, USA Today says Clinton builds lead in divided nation worried about election day violence. In every major poll where they only sample 9% more Democrats, that's, that's the bottom. He's beating her by two, three, four, five points. But don't worry, USA Today, let's go look at the methodology. Oh, she's built a 10-point lead magically, getting you ready for the fraud. So we're going to be breaking that down in great detail. Uh, again, I mentioned the election fraud that's going on. Don't let that discourage you. This is the animating contest of liberty. You have a right in your private polling area. The polling officials aren't supposed to be in there. And they're misinterpreting laws. We've looked at it, telling you you can't be videotaping with your own phone or photographing your vote. They're supposed to give you paper ballots if you want them. They're not doing it all over the country. We confirmed right here in Austin it's not happening. At multiple polling places, we have it on video. And we're there to document it, not to interfere. We're outside talking to people. In exit polls, that is what the media has always done. It's part of defending our republic and the integrity of our election system. But continuing, Donald Trump will win, claims professor who correctly predicted every U.S. presidential election since he set up this computer program. And that's what the Google bots show. It's what Facebook bots show. It's what all the big corporate bots. And by the way, I'm hooked into it because I have a major website and I've got basically full access to Google. Uh, most people that have sites just have smaller access to the analytics because I've been working with Google, working with the devil for at least 18, 19 years. We've got full access. We don't do whole shows off the data we've got. But some of it's proprietary. We're not supposed to show it. It's basically like an NSA interface. And it just shows Trump off the charts everywhere. I mean, Hillary, Hillary has the, the excitement in the public of cleaning up dog crap out of your backyard when you're 12 years old, the dog's been out there for a week, you hadn't been scooping like you're supposed to, and dad or mom says, get out there before I let you go to the movies and scoop up the dog crap. That was my job, both of you are, pick up the dog crap. Uh, I hate to use a gross analogy, but the excitement she's got on the internet is the level that you have picking up dog crap. I mean, that's it. On a, on a scale of, of likability, she's right there, not with dog crap, but with having to pick it up, having to deal with it. A rotten, old, evil, demonic mafia crime boss representing the Chicago Mafia, the Dixie Mafia, the KKK. I mean, she is a despicable monster creature who, according to so many witnesses, her chef, you name it, constantly does not like black people serving her and will say, just what is that N-word doing? Get that N-word in here now. And will write on notes like lawyers do, get that N-word out of here. I mean, I cannot imagine having a black person serving me or anybody else and calling them names. Just the degeneracy. The, she doesn't give tips. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm ranting. She steals furniture everywhere. She steals it out of the State Department, the White House, the cutlery. She's a egomaniac, psychopath person who is not just a kleptomaniac, but a kleptocrat maniac. So we're going to be breaking all of that down. Uh, we, the, the video's up on Infowars.com. We posted it to Facebook. We shot it last night. Uh, Danny Williams is in contact with uh, people like Biggs and uh, others and was pointing out, hey, my YouTube's been taken down. Millions and millions of views just of his press conference, millions of views of the other videos that we've obviously shown here. And I called him up because the poor guy doesn't have any help. The media's like, it's a big right-wing conspiracy with the Trump behind it. No, he's all by himself. And I said, well, let's get you on speakerphone here. He was driving to pick up his kids after work. And I said, let's get you on speakerphone and uh, shot a report. By, by early morning hours, they had reinstated it. But they said via community standards, he was racist. Nothing was racist said on the channel. Nothing was bad, but their community guidelines. Oh, you've got a channel with 10 million views. We're not going to let you have that channel. We say you're a bad person. So that's the new commissariat system. But World Net Daily reports. YouTube backs off ban on Clinton's black son. Now continuing, uh, leaked emails show Clinton staffers struggling to handle Bill's woman issues. We've got more on that coming up and with what's in the WikiLeaks. We've got Trump coming out ahead in more polls. Uh, that's just some of what we're going to break down. Former Secret Service agent who we frequently interviewed is getting ready to uh, sue for defamation mainstream media.
Also, there's a big stack of news here. Here's why Bruce Springsteen's blue-collared heroes have made Donald Trump their rock star. And expanding on that, some Jewish voters go against Tide support Trump, a record number for a Republican. Uh, that's being reported out of CBS News. Uh, it's hats and T-shirts. Trump fans rally in Jerusalem's old city. Well, I thought he was the big evil anti-Semite. Tell you who the anti-Semites are, folks. It's the radical Islamists, the communist Chinese are anti-Semitic for whatever weird reason. But I'll tell you really, as George Soros and Madeleine Albright, George Soros helped round up Jews in mass. I'm going to skip this break and sell them out in Eastern Europe. He was like a bloodhound going and finding Jews and, 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 and then robbing them. They would think they could pay him money to get out of the country. Of course, they never did. He'd take the money and then betray them. And the Nazis loved him. Madeleine Albright's father did the same thing. And notice, these are the people that claim they represent Jews in America. They'd kill you for a dollar if they could. I don't care if you're black, white, Jewish. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. These are evil people. And if they're going to have the Jerusalem Post call me anti-Semitic, exposing people that round up Jews than I am. That's the big dirty secret that Dr. Pachinik, who is a true Holocaust survivor, uh, lost family members, barely got out of Europe in World War II. We, we, I thought I'd have him on just for a whole hour on this because it, it really makes him mad at, at, at those type of folks, is that it's literally the neocons and so many of these other groups that, that made sure the Jews couldn't get out and got the money from the Jews, claiming they were going to let them get out and then stole it and didn't let them get out. And it's despicable. And it's organized crime. And I've decided to do some big investigative reports uh, on that and just lay all that out because, you know, there are some real Nazis that, that you know, we've got hunting Hitler going on down in South America. How about hunting Hitler's accomplices right here in America today? But they'll... They'll have the media grab some old jail guard who we're not sure he's really a jail guard, might have been, when they're 95 years old and can't talk and can't defend themselves, and then have some big show trial for them. They're a real Nazi, blow their head off. But when you've got real Nazis that go on 60 Minutes and say, I don't apologize for helping round up Jews, then they get worshipped as the Jewish leaders. Truly sick, and I'm really glad to see Jews, and everybody else for that matter, waking up worldwide to just corruption and evil, no matter what name or religion or race it comes under, corruption needs to be dealt with. We all need to come together of every religion, every race, every creed for basic freedom and to fight corruption because that's what we're dealing with. And Obamacare and all this stuff gets passed by big corrupt special interests put into place so all these different mafias can battle over who gets to suck the most blood out of us. And there's no one mafia that's in control right now, but they're all trying to build a world government, hoping they'll end up being in control of the technocracy. That's why all these different criminal groups support it, because it's a megalomaniacal power trip. But I digress. Uh, huge reports out showing uh, Trump is polling 21 to 30 percent, depending on the state, places like Michigan, with black Americans. And again, the political correctness says African-American, but then black folks don't want to be called that. It's all about the media telling us what names we use for each other when we're all just human beings. But the point is, black people, it appears, to a great extent, are breaking the trance. And if Trump could get in and actually deliver on major tax cuts, and I'm all for bigger tax cuts in these inner city areas than other places. That's true affirmative action for people that have been run over and left behind. Actually just let them have more money, let businesses have incentives to move into those areas, and then move out the leftist controllers that want to activate mobs, again, of organized criminals to burn down the cities to drive down the wages even more. So then they come in with a community reorganization package and, 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 and fake gentrification run by the establishment and then move the folks out. This is how you're being set up. I want to expose how you're being set up. I want to expose how I'm being set up. I don't like setups. I don't like economies based on fraud, I like economies based on renaissance. Now, there's so much more to get into. Obamacare architect laughs about skyrocketing premiums. We're going to play all this today. Isn't that sickening? Gruber laughs about it, and so does Ezekiel Emanuel. It's all very funny. They both laugh and say, we're going to gouge you more money. Thank God you're so stupid. Uh, so more celebrating uh, the criminal activity in your face. We're going to be getting to all of that as well today. But before I go any further, they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to say the Russians are taking over the election. We've got to have international monitors. 
from the EU and the UN run the elections. Trump is 10, 15, 20, 30 points behind, 100 points, 500 points, 1,000 points. And you're going to lie and say he's 30 points behind. Why not say 5,000 points? But you're like, well, there's only 100 points in the election. I understand that. But they want us to lose hope and believe this so when they steal it, we buy it. But now they're panicking because there's such a landslide. As early voting numbers come in from Florida to Texas, landslide for Donald Trump. Despite all the fraud, the illegals voting over and over again, the dead people voting from Colorado to Texas to Pennsylvania, he is ahead in all these states in the exit polls. They are scared. It's record voting. That's not good for Democrats. They do better when there's low voting. And ladies and gentlemen, now, Mook, Robbie Mook, state of the race, he's come out and said that Trump could win, so get out and vote. They're hitting the panic button. Here it is. Donald Trump has been going around telling people not to listen to the polls and saying that he can still win this race. Well, you know what? He's absolutely right. Hillary's got the wind at her back, but we can't become overconfident. We call states like Florida, North Carolina, and New Hampshire battlegrounds for a reason. They can go either way. In fact, there was a poll that showed Donald winning Florida. We've seen polls tighten since the third debate, and we expect things to get even closer before Election Day. Please visit IWillVote.com. Find out if you can vote early in your state. Or if you requested an absentee ballot, please fill it out and send it back as soon as possible. All right, that's good. If you want to vote on election That's enough. Get him off the screen. I can't look at him. Now, why are they doing this? They wanted the New York Times, USA Today, they all announced a few weeks ago, she's going to win in early voting, and we're going to call it early with projections, calling that a sampling for Hillary. The problem is the numbers from Pennsylvania, which is a true battleground, and Florida and other areas show him two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, even 10 points ahead in the samples that they're getting from early voting and it's record level. So that's why they're panicking and saying, oh my gosh, get out there as fast as you can because they can't steal a landslide. It'll become too obvious if at midnight, uh, you know, on November 8th, going into uh, November 9th, they're having to do stuff like they did in Ohio, taking hundreds of precincts with thousands of voters in each one and giving 100% to Barack Obama. I mean, they don't want to do ham-fisted stealing like they did with Mitt Romney, because this landslide's even bigger. Now let's go ahead and go to the next one. Texas official, this is Fox, sees record-breaking turnout, and it's all for Trump. Here it is. We are seeing, rec we have a record number of people registered to vote in Texas. We're having record turnouts uh, the first day, the second day of early voting. Uh, and it's not uh, Bernie Sanders supporters coming out to support Hillary, and it's not Barack Obama supporters coming out to support Hillary. But it's a new surge of uh, Trump voters. Many have never registered to vote. Many have not voted in eight or ten elections, so they're not recorded in, in the polls. Uh, I think it's, this indicates that it's going to be a crushing victory in Texas uh, for the Trump campaign. Pain. It's very obvious to me. Do you think some of the polls are off, or why? Why do you think that the, the numbers don't line up within your estimation? What's really happening down there? Well, I know for a fact that the polls are off because they oversample uh, Democrats by about some of them eight, some of them up to sixteen percent are oversampling Democrats. They're oversampling women five to eight uh, percent. So. The Republican vote is underreported, plus there's no way to sample this extra 20 or 25 percent of new voters uh, that are Trump voters. They're not Republicans, they're not Democrats, they're pragmatists, they're tired of the status quo, and they won't change. And they say the Donald Trump campaign, is he's the change agent. And yeah, that's Sid Miller, who's dead on, because we haven't really gotten into this. Normally, the, the, the scamming is oversampling women or calling the independents independents when they really know it's from a pool that's mainly Democrats. And they can do that by demographic, by phone number, by, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. It's all come out. Now, they're, they're cheating over there, too. But they're just doing it. Not, not eight points, Sid. I haven't seen one at eight. They're all nine and up. And he said, as high as 16? We've shown it, the CNN polls. They do after the debates where they call 512 registered voters and they go, call us. And you call the number. Are you a registered voter? Okay, we'll call you back after the show. And then they call back and the people that answer and then they go, oh my, are you a Democrat? Yes, I am. Well, we're going to keep your vote then. 40 something to 20 something. I, I said because it varies. 46% Democrat, 48% Democrat, 23% Republican, 27% Republican. I mean, that's how they would sample it. 
double the Democrats. We're not talking about 16% oversampling. We're talking double. This is ridiculous. Of course Hillary Clinton was winning by 68, 70 points. Oh, just in. CNN poll, 30 minutes after the debate, we've got the first sign of it poll. She's winning by 68 points. Well, she better be. She better be if you're double sampling. Hell, she should be at 80% of your double sampling. This is ridiculous. So again, that's why you see the votes being flipped. The reports coming in from Ohio. The reports coming in from Texas. She said, well, that's not a battleground state. Whatever, they're doing it because they want to, They want her to probably try to win the popular too because it'll look bad if she doesn't. They're clearly doing this in Florida. They're clearly doing it in Pennsylvania. They're clearly doing it in Colorado. It's happening. By the way, we're starting an email address. We're going to check it every hour, 24 hours a day. Vote at Infowars.com. V-O-T-E at Infowars.com. Screenshots, photos, videos, YouTubes, you've shot yourself of fraud happening. Whatever. You send us that, we'll be checking it constantly. I want all the reporters to be checking it every hour with reports you've got, what you've seen, what's unfolded. I saw a polling place this morning, saw a line 200 feet long out the door, pulled over, boom, got a shot out the window of the car, tweeted it out. It's just intel, 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 intel. All of it's important. Send us your intel. Vote at Infowars.com. We got big stuff coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are only 11 days out and massive evidence of frauds coming in all over the country, flipping votes. Donald Trump is tweeting, very concerned. Election officials have had to pull out some of the electronic machines saying, yeah, they're flipping uh, and, and then turning them back on, uh, going to paper ballots. We've got Democrats on video with Project Veritas from the director of uh, New York's elections right down to the people that are actually doing it admitting organized crime fraud on an industrial scale to steal the election. We have them admittedly being caught in WikiLeaks, paying companies to oversample for Hillary. Uh, in some cases, 40 plus percent. The average is about 16 percent uh, to show her ahead. This is crazy. And now we have them panicking in clips we just played, Mook and others, the head of the campaign, uh, saying that, uh oh, you better go vote because it looks like Donald Trump really could win. So they're getting very, very scared right now. Then we have her crowd sizes, a couple hundred people. Uh, we got 30 people for Kane. Her uh, f f almost falling down again today. That video is up on Infowars.com. It is crazy to see all this happening. Meanwhile, Donald Trump will win, says the uh, political scientist who's always been right in every major election since he launched his algorithm. That's the London Independent. So we're tracking all of this, we have more of the Obamacare architects, Ezekiel Emanuel and uh, also uh, Mr. Gruber, Jonathan Gruber, on TV laughing at the public to their face this time, saying we're going to raise premiums even more to punish you and, and penalties that do not exist. So uh, we have reached an insane asylum level uh, where these people are literally like the Joker laughing at us. We're going to go to our special guest. I mean, I knew that Roger Stone was coming on, but I'm really uh, excited to see that uh, right next to him is James O'Keefe of Project Veritas. So we'll be talking to them with major breaking news in just one moment. Before I go any further, this broadcast is viewer and listener supported. We're obviously, just like these two guys, it's great to have us all together. Uh, the tip of the spear, we need your support now more than ever because we need to have our investigative reporters in the field. It's very expensive to run this operation. That's why I bring you the very best products that I personally use, whether they're non-GMO heirloom seeds or high-quality water filtration systems or high-quality nutraceuticals from things like oil of oregano right through to just things you need like selenium, one of the key trace elements, at InfoWarsLife.com. And we've got our great nootropic that we're going to uh, end the 25% sale this weekend, Brain Force, available at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. And the biggest sale ever. We've done this before, but never topped it. This is the biggest sale we've ever do. 30 to 40% off all the super high quality shortable foods at InfoWarsStore.com. You can also call toll free 888-253-3139. We have one other big special we're announcing today. The ProPure G2 King, that's their biggest, gravity water filter, cuts all the garbage out. Now 30% off at InfoWarsStore.com. So a lot of specials running right now, and that all goes to support the transmission. Uh, we have sold out of the Hillary for President shirts that we started. I thought we had enough to go through the election. It's over. It's collector's item, it's gone. The uh, Bill Clinton rape shirt, that's still available. Roger Stone designed that. Uh, the rape whistles, available. 
Uh, the prices we're selling, and we're not making much money, but it doesn't matter. It's about getting the word out. We have Trump is my president, limited edition, to wear out in public. It's red. So people understand that we're the majority across the board of every race, color, and creed waking up with populism. So a very exciting time to be alive. Now, breaking news right now with Roger Stone, who as we get closer to the end here, we're going to have him on every day if he can do it along with James O'Keefe, uh, the heads of Project Veritas, uh, that has just absolutely, I think, would win the Most Valuable Player Award uh, in this overall 2016 election exposing the organized crime. And I, I, I mean, I hate to nominate him for that because I want that, and I'm sure Drudge wants that. I guess Drudge is calling it the coach, and so is Roger Stone. But I tell you, Most Valuable Player, the guy that scored you know, most of the touchdowns in the game that have been so devastating, along with WikiLeaks. I, I, it's hard to say who, folks, but i got to tell you, James O'Keefe doesn't want the credit. He wants to beat these people, but here he is joining us via Skype uh, with Mr. Stone. So a great surprise to have you there with Mr. Stone. Hey, thanks, Alex. Uh, Roger's here because we're going to be releasing a little video tomorrow where uh, Roger makes a little cameo in it. So he's in my office, and he said you were doing the Skype, and... It's great to be here. Well, I know you're a busy man, so let's let you first uh, 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 tell us uh, the latest. Uh, give us some hints on what's going to be uh, breaking your take on what I just broke down. And then, of course, Roger, who's heading up the national operations uh, grassroots to, to stop the steal, can fill us in. Well, it's very humbling for you to say that. And uh, I've, we're, we're very busy. I've been, I've, I've, we released four installments of this series. This week, we found out that Hillary was personally involved, personally involved. In, in, in dressing people up at these protests to elicit a violent reaction. And the White House has been asked about it, and Trump brought it up in the debates last week, as you saw. Um, we released part four, where they took money from a foreign bank account and then returned it. So two people have been fired. You know, there may be more fired. Uh, we're releasing another video tomorrow. And as it relates to voter fraud, the, the New York City Commissioner of Elections, after our video last week, was issued a subpoena because he said that they bust people around and him and de Blasio right now are at war with each other. So he was issued a subpoena, and we're going to see what happens there. Uh, again, not tooting your horn, just breaking down the chain of events. You guys have been mirroring, I guess without even knowing, the intel WikiLeaks has, but then showing it in the real world, confirming it in triplicate. And then you've also, again, have Hillary confirmed in the videos that she's giving the direct orders and what Hillary wants, she gets. And then we have the new WikiLeaks. With Podesta saying, you know, Hillary's crazy. What the hell is she doing? And we have the other emails saying we're covering it up. We've got to, you know, uh, clean all this up. I mean, we have them now. Yeah, I think I think this is her Achilles' heel. The fact that I thought the vote, the voter fraud is important. The in, the inducement of violence at the protests that's a smoking gun, and she hasn't even denied it. I mean, she w won't even address it when she was asked on the airplane late last week about it. She they said, well, what did you what do you have to say for yourself? She literally ran away and said, time to get food. So it, it's, I think it's her Achilles heel that she was personally involved. Bob Creamer, the man in the videos, you know, he's no low-level guy. He's the beating heart of the institutional left in the Democratic Party. And he has been, and that heart has been ripped out of the body right now. And he went to the White House 340 times, met with the president 47 times. The mainstream media is not doing it, but someone has to continue asking her over and over again, what do you have to say for yourself for, for addressing people up like Donald Duck? It's a stupid, silly thing that she did, but she did it. And, and it, uh, that's why people were, beat, were beaten and bloodied is because of what she did. And we know from the emails sending people in to basically elicit uh, attacks on women or having security drag out women that were causing disturbances. I mean, this is premeditated. This is absolutely uh, criminal. And, and when you say that their heart's been torn out, we're not just saying that. I mean, politically, even if she crawls over the finish line and steals the election, which is getting scarcer and scarcer, it looks like, as a chance, she's going to end up getting indicted. I mean, she makes Nixon look like a saint. That, that, that's yeah. the point I was just about to make, which is, look, no one ever proved that Nixon knew about the break-in at the Watergate, and he was removed, essentially, for dirty tricks and illegalities pertaining to the 1972 election. Uh, what Hillary is, as James says, you've got the smoking gun. She has been involved. Now, in the old days, Woodward and Bernstein would be on her like a cheap suit. Where's the Washington Post? Where's the New York Times? The very people who drove Nixon from office in investigative reporting because of irregularities and dirty tricks in the 72 election, I would remind you. Uh, they're silent today. There's like, oh, nothing to see there. Keep moving.
We're 11 days out. There's massive evidence of election fraud. O'Keefe, again, and his crew blew it wide open, the premeditated, like something out of a Batman movie where they're rubbing their hands together, giggling about how no one can stop them. <laughs> I mean, literally, for listeners who just tuned in, then you go to Project Veritas and watch the videos for yourself. Now even more is coming out. What do you expect them to do? I mean, do they have enough bravada to actually try to steal it now that we have them on video admitting they're stealing it? I think, Alex, um, you know, to Roger's point, I, I think that you have a situation where uh, Trump is, is a proxy vote against the entire system, the entire establishment, even even in the unlikely case that Hillary pulls this one through. She, no one has confidence in how the, and the whole system is rigged. The whole game is rigged. And what I said to you last time was, is that this story is not just about the corruption and the fraud and the illegality and that she was personally involved in protests, which all of her people said that she was and that they were talking about busting people across state lines and proudly saying it. It's a story about how the citizens of this country are so fed up and so angry with the media that they, that, 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 that like we're the barbarians at the gates. The yes. Millions of people on social media putting pressure on the mainstream media to cover this story. This is a turning point in our country's history right now because you have millions of people with nowhere to go except for your show and they view they view Roger as a leader. They view Project Veritas as a leader. This is a turning point for our country. We don't need the, the Washington Post anymore. Woodward and Bernstein. Absolutely. And, and, and we're not just saying this for it's, listeners it's, because this is so historic. Undoubtedly, they even admit this. They're hitting the panic button in a whole bunch of big publications, as you know, admitting they're dead, admitting everyone hates them, admitting they're a shadow of a shadow of a shadow, and admitting that they have destroyed all their credibility, and that if they're crazy enough to just put Hillary in now, that will be the absolute coup de grace tombstone i mean they we have fought her the people have fought her and now the system is completely chewed up and bleeding to death that's right no one no one has faith in the system anymore right and you look we have an early warning on what's about to happen in these elections i mean since i announced the stop the steal exit poll program by the way the three networks conduct exit polls on a regular basis they contract out to do it no one accuses them of intimidating voters but since we announced the Stop the Steal exit poll program in 7,000 selected precincts uh, across the country in key states, the attack on us from the, from the left and their, and their running dog lackeys has been outrageous. Racists, thugs, uh, uh, a, a motley crew of stumble bums that are going to be threatening people at the polls. Oh, they're going to be wearing badges. By the way, no badges. No, we're going to run a neutral exit poll. It's not like a guy comes up to you with a Trump hat and a Trump t-shirt and Trump buttons and says, hi, I'm Texie, taking an exit poll. This is going to be done on a scientific basis. And it has panicked the establishment because they know we can compare the exit polls with the actual results and have evidence conceivably that you could take into a federal court to overturn this election. The great danger is the rigging of the machines. It's not just voter fraud. James, I think, has uncovered uh, a, a, a torrent of dirty tricks, and he's on the edges of their attempts to hijack this election. So um, it, it is you, you can see what's coming through what's happening now in Texas and other places. You're starting to see the machine twist. And out. that's my question. We're awake. The world's awake. The frauds all come out. Veritas has them admitting they're trying to steal it. We have the WikiLeaks admitting they're trying to steal it. They're rigging polls. They're panicking. So now that they're with the lights on, trying to creep into the house and steal the jewels, are they still going to do it with a sports stadium of people watching them? I'll tell you that the attorney general of, um, of uh, Delaware just put out a memorandum where they said, you're not allowed to film or expose things at the polls. So I just got that on my desk this morning. They're, they're trying to stop people like, or people like Veritas from going and filming and uncovering it. They're, trying, they're going to make it illegal. They're going to criminalize journalism. They're going to try to shut. Everyone always said, well, Hillary gets elected, James, they're going to put you in jail. And I, I hope that I don't think the American people will stand for that. I don't think my your audience would stand for it. I I've been told really, I've been, Roger's been told they get back in. They're coming after all of us. Yes, they're going to come after. Well, not not unless your audience puts pressure like Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, kicked me off two weeks ago and 40,000 people sent tweets to Jack Dorsey and then they reinstated us. Since right? you mentioned so, that they kicked. With 10 million views on that channel, another 20 or so on his, three on ours, so we're talking 30-plus million views, they kicked Danny Williams off 
YouTube yesterday saying his videos were racist. There was nothing racist in them. This is the new community guidelines. Now, because of pressure, they put them back today. World Net Daily's reporting. What do you make of that? I, I, exactly. Because of pressure, they put them back today. So I think we're fine as long as our as your audience and Roger's audience and, and my audience, as long as we put pressure on the machine. I, but, but the whole the fact that the United States attorney in Delaware is making it, or the attorney general rather, is making it illegal for me to film the fraud that's that's now we're entering a brave new world. There's sure, and how does he circumvent the laws that are already there that you can be outside? Because we have crews outside, and people are running up to us saying you're criminal as well. But they're letting people with Hillary uh, stickers on them go in and actually solicit votes. In fact, here's a clip that came out on Twitter this morning, sent to us by the activist. Uh, vote at infowars.com, folks. Send all your links there. Vote at infowars.com to that email. Here's a lady going up to a Clinton operative with a Clinton, you know, a badge armband, basically, who's recruiting people to vote at the polling station now that is illegal here it is stickers if you're registered people to vote in the state of nevada can you show me the law that says that yeah i sure will what's your name uh, really <laughs> you better hide your face because i'm going to call the news on this one we're going to put you on info wars so you're another one you're about the fifth one in the state of nevada wearing hillary stickers you know you can't be wearing Hillary stickers if you're registering people to vote. You can't. No, it's a free place. So what's your name? So what's your name? All right, it goes on and on. It shows the polling place right behind her. Uh, now, now again, it's uh, the law varies, but it, I think she's on the edge of it. The point is, this is the brazen behavior. And notice the lady that sent us this said, tweeted it at O'Keefe, Roger Stone, and InfoWars. People understand the, those are the places to report this type of stuff. We will get it out. So thank you, listeners, for taking action. Roger, James O'Keefe? Yeah, let me address this. Uh, the 50 states have different laws pertaining to the conduct inside and around a polling place. And most states allow electioneering a certain number of feet away, several hundred thousand usually. Uh, therefore, asking people outside a polling place when they leave how they voted in a scientific poll. Well, the, as I said, the networks do it. It's very common. Uh, videoing those conversations outside the polling place, which is at this point not part of our plan, but would be entirely legal. Uh, as far as electioneering, again, as voters approach the poll outside a certain number of feet, generally speaking, but officials inside wearing Clinton paraphernalia, people going in and out wearing Clinton paraphernalia. This was is clearly sure, illegal. To be clear, according to the states. Twitter person, a, a reporter, she was going in and out. The point is, she's talking to people as they're going in and going out. So correct me if I'm wrong. You shouldn't be talking to them as they go in, especially if you're festooned with Hillary badges. Unless you're a certain number of feet. So if she if she saw people in the parking lot, let's take Connecticut, a state I know. I think it's 230 feet from the polling place. You're allowed to electioneer, hold a sign, cheer, hand out flyers, anything you want but a certain number of feet away from the poll. You can't follow the voters in. So she can't be at the door to the grocery store. Correct, exactly. But she can be on the outer edges of the parking lot of the grocery store. Okay, uh, uh, this is just too historic what's happening. I'm skipping this break too. This is just so great to have you two guys here with us. I know you've got to go in about 10 minutes, uh, both of you. James O'Keefe, what happens if they try to steal it? Uh, what does your gut tell you? Other key points, you've got the floor. Well, I think the, F you know, the, the video that came out Monday where it showed the Hillary campaign illegally coordinating with these nonprofit organizations. They're spending money to help to help the campaign. That's an FEC violation. So there have been a couple complaints filed. Your point was, well, what do they do? What do you do when they break the law? And that's what it's a cliche at this point. But we, we're living in sort of a banana republic where laws we're not a nation of political laws. We're a nation of political will where not no one is equal under the law and she breaks the law over and over and over again so i catch it on video where she's personally involved bob creamer says she's involved uh they're 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 bragging about how they coordinate on fox news brad woodhouse said of course i coordinate with hillary clinton he's bragging about the fact that he's doing illegal campaign coordination we issued an fec complaint we sent out an email came campaign to 100,000 people put pressure on the fec what more can we do the law enforcement agencies of our country are not going to enforce the laws. I mean, I'm a journalist. I can report facts. I can put it on videotape. But it's very concerning. And to quote him, he says, there's nothing the government will do. We're above the law. He literally what, what, does the what, famous criminal celebration. 
But wasn't the, the whole lesson of Watergate, no person is above the law? Isn't that what the liberals said over and over again in the uh, when they removed Nixon? Now it's very clear that uh, that certain people, call it elite deviants, if you will, certain people get a pass. They can sure, so let me ask you both. What happens if they steal it in front of God and country? Uh, James and then Roger. I think what happens is the people will revolt. People will, people are, I, I, I saw it, I, I saw it over the last two weeks. I've never seen anything like this. I agree. I've, we are, we are witnessing a, 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 a populist revolt on social media. People don't give a crap what the New York Times says. They don't believe them anymore. So if you have 50 or 100 million people in this country who have no one to speak for them, what's going to happen to those people? I think that's a, that's a powerful movement of people that are going to literally revolt. It's not going to be with pitchforks. I think it's going to be on social. I think it's going to be on media. I think they're going to, I think they're going to literally revolt. If, if, and I think if, we're already like, seeing that. Mainstream media admits everybody hates us. We're losing subscriptions. We're losing sponsors. They've gone from being absolutely not trusted to being absolutely hated. Roger, what happens next? The important thing, Alex, is you, we just can't have a supposition based on, on circumstantial evidence that this was stolen. You need hard evidence that would be admissible in court. And that is why we at StopTheSteal.org are trying to create a legal record. That's why we're doing these exit polls, so they can then be compared. Within an hour of the polls closing, we hope to have an entire analysis, and we will be able to hand Donald Trump or the Republican National Committee, if they're really for Donald Trump, uh, a package that shows that this election was heisted, if it indeed is heisted. Again, don't get distracted by voter fraud. It's significant, but that's not the ball. No, game. I agree. The big issue is going to be the vote flipping by the machines, which Absolutely. we've confirmed in Texas. I have family that's scared to come on. It happened to them, okay? I tried to go vote this morning. The lines were too long, so I have the photo. I just was like, good God, there's a 200-foot line, and inside the building was a, you know, a snaking 60-foot line and like 100 people waiting. So used to, if I went and voted, there might have been five people there in early voting. That's why I like to vote early. Uh, so what does that signify? Giant lines everywhere, almost everyone voting for Trump, according to election officials, what people are telling them, exit polls, and we're being told Texas is close. This is a part and parcel of the, of the two-step. Step one, create a false level of anticipation, of expectations. Step two, rig the machines to meet those expectations. Nobody will be the wiser. It's the perfect crime. That's why it has to be detected through exit polls. If they would allow us to inspect the software for the machines in advance, we could determine that this is not happening, but they will not allow that. Secondarily, these machines can be rigged at the central server. They can be rigged uh, by, the, by the, somebody inside the local board of elections, or they can be rigged by a person carrying a $15 device that he bought at uh, at Best Buy. And that's been proven uh, by HBO. I want to get final comments from both of you because I know you've got to go and, of course, give out the websites. But talk about Project Veritas, huge coup last week. Here's Scott Fovel, the number two minion of the top Democratic operative, uh, Kramer, uh, saying, hey, we're above the law. It doesn't matter. We're not worried about the press. Here's that clip. The question is whether when you get caught by a reporter, does that matter? Because there's a turn in investigation or not? In this case, in this state, Right. So, so this is sort of maybe, maybe not stuff. That's good. He goes on and on. So, 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 so James O'Keefe, we don't have any power to do anything about it. Uh, I mean, I've been asking the questions here. Other points you'd like to add, James O'Keefe of Project Veritas? Well, I think I think the point is in that clip, Scott Fovel specifically said he said the Republicans are too weak in the knees to actually enforce the laws in the state of Wisconsin. Now, I will tell you that in the last couple of days. I've, I've sources have told me we've been contacted by law enforcement agencies and they are planning on pressing charges. Now, whether they go through with it, this is what their plan is at this point. Sure, they want to go they, forward they are, and, then, and, then, and then Loretta Lynch stops it. Right, but, but, the, but, the, but the main, the, the, this is really shocking what he said. He said I could F-U-C-K my mother and get away with it in places like Michigan and Wisconsin because the Republicans are too weak in the knees to actually do anything about that's it. Right. That's right. The, that's the main story is that you, you, they, they could do anything and get away with it. And that's because they're really Democrats. The WikiLeaks prove that Rubio and Ryan are actual Democratic operatives. Yes, that, yes. It's, it's, worse, it's worse than we think. They're unwilling to enforce the laws 
and and you got a man but they're very embarrassing to the republic in closing i want to say this right now if you guys do five more you can't if not you can, i mean I, i've got guests coming up so i understand but i'm just let's all spend some time talking about project veritas talking about stone cold truth and infowars.com we are the tip of the spear we're not bragging in fact it's not that fun to be uh, under under all these attacks we need support buy my books buy my videos buy the high quality products at infowarsstore.com we have uh, great prices on high-quality, storable food right now. Uh, great Trump is my president, limited edition shirts, 25% uh, off on some of our supplements, InfoWarsLife.com. I need your support. You guys, you know, call for support. I mean, we are like the battle axe going up against the enemy. We need folks' support. They are supporting us. I want to thank the viewers and listeners, but Roger and then Veritas, uh, you guys spend, you know, 30, 40 seconds apiece for uh, uh, calling for support. Well, let, let me start here. I urge people to give to James' program. It is really, it is the tip of the spear. And he has been able to learn and document things that have been vital to this overall effort. You'll recall, Alex, that many months ago, I said here on InfoWars that the demonstrations at the Trump rallies that burst into violence was all being instigated by Soros-paid operatives wearing Bernie t-shirts as a false flag. We now know that all of that is accurate, thanks to the work of Veritas. So I strongly urge your listeners to, to pony up. No better bang going. for the buck than supporting Project Veritas. Absolutely. And no better bang for the buck supporting Roger Stone, StoneColdTruth.com, or InfoWars.com. It's a total war. Commit now. Uh, James? Thank you. Yeah, exactly. What, what I mean, Roger is doing good work. He's getting the message out. We were talking before we came on the program about how I'm in, I'm in cabs all around the country on my journalism, and the cabs are talking about Alex Jones and InfoWars. So, so, so stay tuned. we got more coming out. ProjectVeritasAction.com. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you both. Roger, let's talk again tomorrow if you can do it because so much is moving yes. so fast. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Tomorrow, Alex, a special report on Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania now moves into the toss-up category with Donald Trump on the move. All right, very exciting. Hour two straight ahead. Hard to believe Weldon Henson's been in this operation more than 10 years since he got out of the Air Force. Now he's married, got kids, the whole nine yards. A good friend of mine, great country music singer as well. You can check out his website. But I saw him out here in the hallway. Uh, he went and voted, too. He was just talking about how crazy everybody he talked to was for Trump. Black, white, Hispanic, you name it. And literally, 30 seconds ago, I said, drag him in here, set the chair up. Let's get Weldon Henson, who's our shipping uh, and uh, store manager, uh, doing a great job here, getting them the uh, info war to the next level. Weldon, I haven't heard what you wanted to tell me you were so excited about. I just said, say it on air. That's kind of my rule with the crew. Say it on air because, you know, we're not just in a bubble here. We're talking to the whole world. Uh, well, you were super excited. What's going on? There's, uh, no teleprompters here. No, I went out to vote this morning. Obviously, the lines were out the door. I had to. Wait. I saw 200 plus foot ones. I couldn't vote. Uh, I, well, it took me an hour. It took me an hour in line. But, uh, I, you know, I'm sitting there talking to people, you know, I don't see how Hillary Clinton can win. That's what I was. That's what I was trying to tell you before he drug me in here. But uh, it was pretty amazing. Everybody was excited. Uh, people were concerned. You could tell there was a, a genuine concern. People were they were serious. I mean, they were excited, but they were serious. Um, I just I don't see how Hillary Clinton can win. I guess, but again, again I, and if I, they if they cheat and put her in, they get even more serious. We can't lose. We can't we we can't lose for winning. <laughs> right. I mean, it's true. You engage, you win when you when you're on the right side. It's like the founder of the Texas Rangers famously said. He said, "A man in the wrong can't stand against a man who's in the right who keeps, keeps on, on coming." Keeps on coming. So I, I think are we going to keep on coming, Weldon? Absolutely. I mean, I think you're seeing the silent majority is finally starting to speak up. They're starting to come out and say, you know, this we're, is our we're country for everybody. Yeah. Can you believe the WikiLeaks just prove everything? But they're even worse criminals than I thought. It, it's laughing and talking bad about black people, how they're dumb. What the hell? I stand in line. I, I brought some of this stuff up with, with some people that were a couple of folks back. And, and uh, people were actually engaging in conversation and talking about it. And they knew about this stuff. I, I mean, I vote every time, you know, the election uh, comes up. And you usually, usually you can't talk about this kind of stuff in line waiting to vote. I mean, people, they don't People are coming out of their shell. Yes, absolutely. I think so. What do you make of how the Veritas info dovetails with all the WikiLeaks? It's crazy. I mean, it's it's astounding. That's so we've got true. video and everything's in the WikiLeaks. We don't just have the emails they admit are real. We have the video of these people literally going, oh, we're going to rip them off. And then and then Gruber and Emanuel go on TV and go, ah, we're going to rip you off. Oh, we're going to hurt you. Ah. I mean, they can't, what the hell are these people? If they, if they steal this election, which obviously they're trying, I mean, it, you're going to see some amazing things happen. Uh, the, the general. Well, that's American my concern. Public. Look at camera four right there, Weldon. What do you think in your gut's going to happen if they steal this thing? Uh, 
I, I really don't know. I think there's going to be a backlash. There, that's for sure. Everybody's going to stop shopping at all these big corporate stores. We're all going to do research. We're all going to just weaponize in the info war, and everybody's going to get more aggressive, and we're going to take everything over. The communists and socialists and dirtbags infiltrated like rats forever. You're now about to see patriots infiltrate. And then it's all over. And that, that's that's not the folks you want to want to upset and get them engaged. I mean, and that's probably what's going to happen. And, and you're gonna look how they tried to take the, the bonuses that were promised under law from the veterans. They're signing bonuses. What the hell? I mean, they. I don't know what I would do if they came back and said I had to pay pay my my bonus back up for enlisting. I, that that would upset. You sign a contract. It was it's a contract when you sign. They I, never I, pay you enough to even live. So they go okay, we'll give you ten, twenty grand, whatever, to sign up for another five years. That's not that much money. Five grand a year or something. Then you steal yeah. it later. Did you hear they even wanted it with interest? They're now saying. I, I did hear that. <laughs> I, I can't imagine. I mean, but I can't wait to see what happens. You know about that too. So these people are crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Why do you think Emmanuel and uh, Gruber go on TV and laugh at everybody? Is um, that a confidence game deal? It is. It is. It's kind of like a Caligula effect. I think. Uh, they, Caligula they, effect. There you go. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. You know. It's, uh, but th the thing is, is the folks. What I like to call the silent majority. The folks that have common sense. They're starting to wake up, and, and they're done with it. I, I think folks really are. I mean, this is maybe it is a good thing we've had to go through all this. You've been up here for 20 years talking on air. People think you're crazy. Stuff's coming to fruition now. It's happening. Maybe this is good that it's getting so crazy. that. Well, like you said, folks aren't saying we're crazy anymore. No, not at all. And they're not laughing anymore, too. Like It's, uh, it's not funny. I mean, it's serious. Folks were engaged in conversation at, at the polling booths today. And they were engaged, and they were serious. All right, great job, Will. Only 11 days. I'm Alex Jones. I'm your host. This is the Info War. Now into the second hour. In the next 30 minutes, uh, Dylan Howard, who is the editor in chief of the National Enquirer and a bunch of other big publications, is our guest. And I've been on air 21 years. I've been covering news for 25 since I got out of high school and got into RTF. And I never got how they demonized the National Enquirer because that's where I heard about the plan to put implantable microchips in people 25 years ago. 10 years before it was on ABC News, and it was exactly right. That's where I learned about you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and his Nazi ties, which didn't come out until decades later, and it was exactly on target. Uh, so many other things. Now, people get confused by National Enquirer with like other stuff about Bat Boy and other magazines that are up there at the counter. But I got to tell you, uh, they got some tabloid stuff in there, too, about the stars and stuff, because that's what folks buy, but that's accurate, too. I mean, you don't want to get sued, folks. You want to be accurate. And i got to say, the National Enquirer is one of the most accurate publications out there. And I don't say that to kiss the butt of the National Enquirer. I've been saying that for 20 years. Because the New York Times tries to lie. And Jeff Rovin, the big whistleblower that's risking his life to come out and expose the Clintons, along with other fixers that work for him, like Larry Nichols, who's going to join us at the start of the next hour. What they're saying is accurate. What they're saying is documented. What they're saying is proven. And so nine times out of ten, it's places like the National Enquirer uh, or InfoWars or, or, or DrudgeReport.com that are willing. I mean, was Drudge right about Monica Lewinsky? They said he wasn't at first. He was right. Was Drudge right about fees and fines for not having Obamacare? He was right. Were we right about the NSA spying? Was the Enquirer right about it? I remember the Enquirer 25 years ago reporting on NSA spying. First place I learned about it. So I didn't mean to go into a whole the Enquirer so credible line here, but... Is it that they're that credible or that the New York Times is that uncredible? So when Jeff Rovin, this big whistleblower, comes out in the Enquirer, he said, look, you can't go to the New York Times. They're totally controlled. WikiLeaks shows that. Hillary runs them. You go to the Enquirer. So the Enquirer gets lumped in with all the other, you know, stuff, space alien invasion stuff. And they do that to me, too. They go, Alex Jones believes space aliens are about to invade. Never said that. Don't cover space aliens. But it doesn't matter. The people know the truth. That's why the Enquirer is rising Mainstream media is falling. So that's a whole other interview about mainstream media versus independent media and wh wh where the mainstream's going, how it's like an albatross around your neck. But I want to get into their latest uh, big installment this week that just hit newsstands. We're getting an exclusive here. Hillary Fixer breaks ranks. I arrange sex trysts for her with men and with women. But it also just gets into her temperament and more and why he's going public. Uh, so uh, Dylan Howard, NationalEnquirer.com, RadarOnline.com. Uh, now speaking out, it's great to have the editor-in-chief of the Enquirer with us. Good to be with you, Alex. So, wow, uh, break this down. I mean, new installments coming out, uh, why Mr. Rovin went public, this is huge. Well, Alex, uh, if you trace it back, the origin of this story is indeed the now infamous uh, tape of Donald Trump and Billy Bush on that bus. 
Now, as a result of that particular story, Jeff Rovin decided to break 24 years of silence, step from the shadows, and unmask himself as the Hillary Clinton fixer, the hitman, the man who orchestrated and ran a backroom operation out of a Hollywood uh, director's uh, office, an off-the-books operation whereby he dealt with the biggest scandals, the biggest controversies of the Clinton administration. And this reaches the highest levels of the White House. And what Mr. Rovin reveals is startling by its very nature. Uh, he, he tells us that effectively Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton used brass knuckled tactics, the type of tactics that you would think would be isolated to the mafia in an attempt to sabotage those women who made allegations against Bill Clinton and also sabotage the federal investigation of their whitewater land scam by special prosecutors. How did they do this? In the most disgusting and vile manner. Taking a page from perhaps something like The Sopranos, Bill and Hillary hired a squad of private eyes, people like Mr Fixit, to shadow the movements of federal prosecutors as they closed in on a potential indictment of the Clintons in the Whitewater probe. This is corruption at its very highest level. Corruption, seemingly business as usual, for the Clintons. And, and reading last week and this week's installments of the Inquirer, I mean, right there, it fits into all my own research how Hollywood's involved really in mafia-type activities, in, in, in perception, in manipulation, with uh, you know, some of the other people, famous, uh, quote, private investigators, actually with murders. I mean, this is really a whole mafia system being exposed when you say it's mafia-like. I look at the Clintons, it seems like it is an amalgamation of kind of a Hollywood mafia slash Dixie mafia uh, tied into all these different seedy elements. Perhaps the strangest part of this whole saga through Jeff Rovin coming forward, though, Alex, is it's not really about the trysts that he supposedly organised for Hillary Clinton or the looting of Vince Foster's offers. But bizarre though it sounds, to me, that's simply a distraction on what the overall uh, reality here of this particular story is. Jeff Rovin, bravely stepping forward, exposes the rottenness at the very core of the Clinton operation. It's about how they've used money, threats, intimidation, lies, all for one twisted purpose to ensure their three decades of power in this country. And they will stop at nothing to do that. They will delete 33,000 emails. They will willfully take part in play for uh, play. If she wants cash, they get her cash. If she wants to intimidate those that challenge the narrative, the public narrative of the Clintons, they do it. If they want to blackmail people, they do it. So at the very core of this, is the notion of muzzling, threatening, intimidating people for one very purpose, and that is that she gets the White House. Exactly. I mean, look, look it's like getting Al Capone on taxes. It's the cover-up. I mean, we have her doing all these mafia tactics to cover up the sex. We're not even focused in as libertines on the sex. It's that they're hypocrites, and I guess that's why he said he went public, going after Trump for some edited 11-year-old tape when this woman literally has done a thousand times that. It's the hypocrisy. Is that why uh, Mr. Rovin went public? Indeed. He said that it was the hypocrisy of the mainstream media and the way in which they covered the uh, now infamous Billy Bush tape that prompted him to come forward. I had been looking at this story for the past two years. I first met him two years ago, and I told him that I was going to expose the corruption of the Clinton operation, to which he responded that he was concerned that his confidential informants would be made public if he didn't participate in the story. It was at that juncture that he decided to, uh, to speak forward. And by doing so, he's provided a glimpse into the very dark heart of the Clinton political system. They facilitate this corruption, and then they perpetuate it. They encourage it. They do Again, it once they get you they involved, they've got dirt on you. I mean, this is one of the closest people ever to the Clintons. This is, this is a, uh, I mean, person with almost no degrees of separation, a very trusted fixer. How did he get in that position? I know it's all in the, in the new issue of the Inquirer, but flush that out for us. It's amazing because they're not even really denying this right now. They are very upset right now. There has been a steadfast no comment from Bill Clinton's office and indeed the campaign of Hillary Clinton to president. That tells that you a lot. Volumes. That tells that you a lot. Volumes. 
This man uh, first came uh, into the orbit of the Clintons uh, in the 90s as Bill Clinton emerged as the front runner uh, to win the White House when the Clintons realised they had a serious problem on their hands. There were these supposed bimbo eruptions that have been well chronicled for years on your show and from whistleblowers such as Larry Nichols and others. And the reality was that this gentleman was connected to someone very, very close to Bill Clinton, one of his closest friends. And it was through that that he was asked to engage in this off-the-books clandestine operation. He outlined to us a series of 12 fixes, incidents that came across his desk when he got the wink-wink, nod-nod, to go and do what was needed to ensure that these particular stories didn't come out. On one particular occasion, he was offered, he offered a uh, serious amount of money to a photographer that obtained compromising photos of the actress Marky uh, Price in a, uh, in, a, in a limousine with Bill Clinton. Wow. Um, before, uh, the, before that deal could be orchestrated, the photographer's studio burned down the night before. This uh, is a series of instances out of the pages of something like a script from Ray Donovan. In another instance, he detailed how, at the orders of Hillary, he was involved in a campaign to discredit Monica Lewinsky. He provided to us a two-page memo that circulated amongst the Clintons in a most confidence, which in many ways validated his story to us because that was addressed to Deputy White House Chief of Staff Harold Icke. That faxed memo bared a date and a timestamp. Not only that, he provided payoff ledgers and we had independent verification of four other sources who confirmed Jeff Roven's involvement in the Clinton operation. But perhaps most alarmingly to me is the notion that the Clintons uh, blackmailed federal prosecutors in the Whitewater probe. This is akin to Watergate, in my mind, to dig up seriously embarrassing material that intimidates the prosecutors so the Clintons could get away with their corrupt conduct. That's right. And there's and no statute, by the way, it. federally on murder, child molestation, and bribing federal officials and treason. There's no statute on those. And now, how much credibility does it add to the Inquirer that you've been reporting on this for 25 years, about 23 years, and now it's all in the WikiLeaks, it's all in the Project Veritas, just like icing on the cake or a cherry on top really proving the fact that the Inquirer was there first. I mean, how do you how how were you guys back when there was no alternative media, no Drudge Report, no Western Journalism Center? How were you able to operate like that? Well, we are by our very nature investigators. We are rogues and renegades who sit on the outside and not we're not in the back pocket of. Uh, so you're a vestigial leftover of real investigative journalists. Indeed, and you know the reality is we. Uh, we put sources through polygraph tests to authenticate the ver veracity of their information. And sure, we have a big checkbook and we pay for information, but the reality is we authenticate that information. And as you pointed out at the top of the hour, if we didn't, we'd get sued. We are exactly. Listen, it's not just that I'm moral. Nation. I go through a lot of authentication because if you don't authenticate, you're going to be out of business. And here's the reality. Uh, the Clintons have never voluntarily told the truth about these actions. We will continue to report on it. Those who won't is the mainstream media. This story came out and they've turned a blind eye. And that is a very, very sad state of affairs for the fourth estate in this country. The reality here is that this story goes to the very crux of one thing, character. Who's fit to take the Oval Office? Do we want a president that is corrupt, that lies, that engages in criminal behaviour? Or do we want Another candidate. Now, we don't have a dog in this fight. We have endorsed Donald Trump. We have said that we believe, our readers believe, that he will be the best candidate for the role of president. 80% 80, 80 of our readers overwhelmingly That's right. have voted for Donald Which Trump. Which is another important but poll. I mean, you guys have been nonpartisan. The fact that 80% of your readers that are registered readers, you know, subscribers, are saying that, that's a big deal. The reality is that... Uh, we will continue to cover, like we have with Gary Hart, John Edwards, Jesse Jackson, and now Hillary Clinton, the big political scandals. We'll do what the mainstream media won't, but it is, it is an indictment on the media when people like Chris Hayes on MSNBC take a swipe at, uh, at the National Enquirer 
and mutter things about aliens and as such to try and discredit the particular story that we've done. Well, that's a badge of honor. I know you know done. that. To have Chris Hayes or any of those people, I mean, those people have like 100,000, 200,000 viewers. They are a joke. They are, but they're doing a disservice to the industry of journalism to not investigate and cover. The reality is these people have never done an inch of investigative journalism in their life. They contribute to the public discourse about who supposedly would make a better president, yet they haven't done any journalistic deed. Instead, it's blow hard work. Well, Dylan Howard, NationalEnquirer.com, their second edition is out on this incredible investigative journalism, super dangerous. My sources say, yes, this is, well, they're not even denying it. I mean, this, this is real. Uh, you talk about dangerous, folks. This is cutting edge. And you look at the mainstream media and how they are a shadow of their former selves. They aren't journalists. They read off teleprompters. And we now know, uh, Dylan Howard, again, uh, the editor-in-chief, NationalEnquirer.com, RadarOnline.com, we now know from the WikiLeaks that they are, literally Hillary is the editor of the New York Times. Yeah, I mean, the, the WikiLeaks, and, and what gets on my goat, Alex, is every time the mainstream media refer to WikiLeaks, they are the stolen WikiLeaks emails. They're not the WikiLeaks emails. They're not the documents that destroy Hillary Clinton, which in fact they are. Instead, they couch it, they create this narrative that these documents are not credible. But the reality is, whatever the origin, whatever It's smoking the source, gun. It's, it's, these, it's, 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 yeah. These emails are illuminating. The reality about Bill Clinton's sexual life is that John Podesta, the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton, acknowledged that they had a problem with the Energizer. Julie Torba McMahon, his longtime mistress, who we at the National Enquirer first broke, they acknowledge that he's still involved in a relationship with her. And they point to the National Enquirer in these WikiLeaks emails. It's staggering that to this very day, Bill and Hillary Clinton are enabled by fixers like John Podesta, not like Jeffrey Rubin anymore, by Cheryl Smith, by others. These people provide the Clintons whatever they want. I was about to say, Andrea Mitchell on video last week the, 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 the spokesman hands her the phone, she looks, nods, then asks the question. It, they don't even care. It's like they are totally insane. Now, now again, we're talking to the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer. We've got 11 days left. Obviously, more is coming out, I'm guessing, uh, from your source and other sources. Other bombshells on the way? Well, yes, indeed. We, we know all these facts, as, as you, we've talk, to, talked and discussed, because of uh, Mr. Fixer, Jeff Roven, unmasking himself. He was essentially one of the detectives tasked with shadowing the prosecutors involved in Whitewater. The revelation that we have exposed in the current issue, which hit newsstands yesterday, is that a senior member of that prosecution team was followed to a seedy motel where he entered that motel in the company of, according to a source, a strapping young man. Making sure not to use his own name when he rented the room, they had essentially a blackmail operation. The Clintons use this to leverage the prosecutor to step down from his involvement in the White House. Now, let's probe. spell this out. This is intelligence operations. This is what the Russians do. You're saying coming out, this is in the new issue, but they're using sex operatives to set up prosecutors. This is incredible. Their tactics were the kinds of stunts the mob could only look on in joy and glee and probably embarrassment that they couldn't orchestrate something. Wow, this there's the headline, National Enquirer. Bill and Hillary to interrupt. Bill and Hillary, their mob tactics to intimidate investigators. Now we know how they're controlling the FBI. Wow, please continue, sir. You've got five minutes left. I appreciate all your time. Uh, uh, just to tell us everything, please. Well, I think the reality here is we have to, before you go to the ballot box, you have to ask yourself the very question as to whom is fit to take the office. The reality is that for three decades, the Clintons have perpetuated corruption at the highest level. They have ordered a blackmail, intimidation, threatening tactics against those that challenge the public face of the family. And the reality is, despite their hands-off approach, if you like, we weren't involved, other people were doing it, the reality is that the traces go straight back to the top of their tree. Mr Fixit provided payoff ledgers to support that. And this should well be not only a fundamental question that voters ask themselves before they cast their ballot, but a question for law enforcement. 
If prosecutors involved in the Whitewater investigation were blackmailed, that is a crime. And a criminal should not hold the highest office in this land. Well, I am just speechless here. You know, I know you probably got to go soon. We're going to break in about three minutes, but I'm told you may be able to hold a little bit longer because I want to come back from break and do five more minutes with you and play the clip sure. from, from the last debate where Trump points at her 24 hours after the Project Veritas came out where she ordered people dressed up as Sanders supporters to go attack Trump, obviously to demonize Sanders, her, her competition, and Trump, her competition. I was told that by the Chicago Police Department. We have sources. We first broke that with Roger Stone, but to see it confirmed and him going after her, I mean, it seems like whole orders of magnitude of, of, of corruption worse than Trump making a few locker room comments. I mean, I, I've got to be frank with you. I'm blown away by how much energy Hillary and her controllers have because you get these, these emails from WikiLeaks. They're running hundreds of news agencies, and they've got interns basically running major newspapers telling them what to do. I mean, you talk about a control freak. It seems like Hillary is the definition of it. Oh, there's no doubt about that. She was essentially the puppet master pulling the strings here for those that worked at the lower level of this clandestine operation. But if you look back, you take a step back. Let's put it into context. Here you've got the President of the United States facing potential impeachment, Hillary Clinton facing potential jail for her involvement in white water. Then you have individuals like George Stephanopoulos, who is now at ABC News. OK, who was essentially a Clinton aide. You've got Harold Icke. The trail of money leads back to a mega, mega Hollywood name, a award winning television and film producer. His involvement is connected to Mr. Fixer, Jeff Rosen. Jeff Rosen is committing these actions at the behest of Hillary and Bill Clinton. This is a criminal conspiracy of the highest order. It beggars belief that it has not been investigated by anyone but the National Enquirer, though I do give props to uh, Michael Isakoff at uh, Yahoo News, who was at Newsweek at the time, who, in his book uh, about the Clintons, discussed many of these tactics that were used. But it also begs the question, why is law enforcement not investigated this? I think we're sitting on the cusp of something very explosive here. I agree. I mean, this, I mean, if this is the definition, this is the definition of racketeering, where you've got Hollywood, the media, the prosecutors, the whole system, them packing the media with their admitted operatives, so the scams could get even bigger into the future. Uh, well, I mean, this is—I've never heard of a criminal enterprise that had this big of dreams. I would challenge the federal investigators involved in Whitewater to step forward from the shadows before election day and tell their stories about what happened, what happened to them, what they observed, what they knew, what the Clintons Because there's did. safety in numbers. Dylan Howard, National Enquirer, Editor-in-Chief, please do a few more minutes with us. So I want you to come back because you're a smart guy and give us your plan to change this. I totally agree. Safety in numbers. Everybody needs to be all in, just like Jeff Rovin, and tell the truth. Let the chips fall where they may. I was talking to Anthony Gucciardi during this last break. And, you know, he does some shows maybe once a week with us. He's over our health writers and research for the nutraceuticals with a bunch of scientists and, and uh, developers. And that's why I hired him because he was he was so successful in natural society and the big product line he had and, you know, inroads into a bunch of big nutraceutical companies that were uh, all organic and supplied Whole Foods. And he said, man, it's like Fight Club. And I'm not bragging. You, you should just know the level of the awakening happening as, as we go back to our guest in a moment who's agreed to stay for the whole hour. So I'm, so I'm very pleased that, that he can do that during his lunch hour, uh, the, the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer, he went to the bank yesterday, and the guy at the bank goes, Anthony Gucciardi, we just love you. We love Alex Jones. Tell him we're all in. And everybody was, like, nodding behind him. And tell Alex we said hi. That's one of our folks that's hardly on air, maybe once a week for 10 minutes. Then he goes to Walgreens to get a prescription, and the pharmacists all come over and are freaking out. Then he goes to get something else at the front counter, and he said they were coming over. I mean, folks, Trump is going to win by a landslide. They're going to try to steal it. And all I can tell you is they want to cause, George Soros admits, a civil war. That's in the emails, too. They want to get us killing cops and burning stuff down. And, and the government is, is, has been hijacked. The government is not a cop writing a ticket or changing an old lady's tire or responding to a civil disturbance. They got a tough job. Can you imagine responding to civil disturbances? Do you have any idea how dangerous those are? I mean, I'm not lionizing police.
I'm just saying they're not our enemy. And we have the crazy, out-of-control Democratic Party. I've always been nonpartisan because Republicans are bad as well. But they are literally trying to cause a civil war in this country. And national polls show Democrats are planning to blow stuff up, burn stuff down, and attack people if Trump wins. Well, I say, I'm calling your bluff. Fill your hand. At a certain point, this country's got to wake up. And I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's happening right now, as we just indicated with Anthony and Weldon. Weldon's got all these friends from the military that, oh, you guys go too far. He says none of them disagree now. They call up and apologize to him. America is waking up. The sleeping giant's awake. I don't care what color you are. You bleed red blood. You're part of that awakening, and it's exciting. That's why they're panicking. We're going to go back uh, to Dylan Howard, uh, RadarOnline.com, NationalEnquirer.com, the national editor, breaking stuff that's as dangerous as it gets, as dangerous as what Drudge is broke. As dangerous as what Veritas is broke. This is crazy stuff. We're going to go back to him and, and play this Trump clip from the last debate in a moment. But first, it's important to vote with your dollars. The Clinton original foundation, their library foundation documents, Judicial Watch sued two years ago. And so did the Western Journalism Center, Joseph Farah, World Net Daily, and got the documents. 20-something thousand pages. And Farah said off record to me, it was on record on air, but he said a lot of it's off record. It's so horrible. The surveillance of people, what they're doing, the mafia ties. He goes, we're just waiting to put a book out on this. Well, it never happened. But he released some of it on World Net Alien here. And it was like, we can't let a new media develop like the National Enquirer. We've got to demonize it, call it conspiracy theory, and try to shut it down. We can't let it ever get any funding like the National Enquirer or books. So it's all about never letting us get funding. Never letting a new media with new views who aren't bought and paid for get in. Now we see them put Democratic operatives in over the entire media. The next level of their takeover. If the Republicans were doing this, I'd go after them. I don't want a one-party state, folks. A ruling party. That's called dictatorship. So, fund us. We've got a Trump, he's my president, red shirt. Everybody's going to wear red on election day and before and after to point out, hey, we're the majority in the streets with the cameras. Just like the Hillary for prison shirt. It's now history. Limited edition, we're not selling it anymore. Everybody's copying it, that's fine. We're not making it anymore. We have the red Trump is my president shirt, Infowars.com, legalized freedom on the back. We have 30 to 40% off all the incredible high quality, fresh, storable foods, the very best out there at Infowarsstore.com. Biggest discount ever, 30 to 40% off on that. 25% off on our nootropic, brain force, all these natural compounds to boost uh, your cognitive ability, obviously. And our ProPure G2.0, their biggest unit, gravity-fed water filter that does 20-something thousand gallons just with the filters it's got. It's so amazing. Keeps the good stuff in, cuts all the glyphosates and crap out. Now, that's 30% off. We've never done a special like that. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. Infowarslife.com is the nutraceutical site. And you can also, again, find all the storable foods at Infowarsselect.com. But those are just sub-URLs because we have a huge... It's in the top 50 shopping carts now on the web, by the way, folks. Uh, then, I mean, that's how big InfoWars has gotten to fund our operation. You can go there, and it'll take you right to the sub page uh, where you can find it discounted. So we're hiring more reporters, more investigative reporters. There's a lot of legal involved in all this, reviewing everything. There's a lot of work goes into this, and I'm not bitching. This is, this is wonderful. Just support us. You need these products, you need Brain Force, you need X2, you need Super Metal Vitality, you need the limited edition Gadsden flag, lock her up shirt. You need to be part of the solidarity, and you are. Look at what you built. You are the info war. So I salute you and I thank you. And folks, when publications like Radar Online or publications like The Inquirer have the courage, because this is all vetted, this is all confirmed from my sources, they cannot believe that Jeff Rovin had the courage, because let me tell you, talk about crosshairs on his back. The biggest fixer, bigger than Nichols, and Nichols has told me off air, he goes, this, this is the guy. This is the guy after I was not involved, they got. This is so huge. We've got to recognize the courage of this, and everybody should go to their newsstands and buy those National Enquirers and give it to everybody you know. Because the great news is everybody I talk to says the Enquirer has more credibility than the New York Times. Of course it does. But they try to confuse it again with the other publications that are bat boy. Now, I've said that. I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate the editor in chief dylan howard of nationalenquirer.com joining us i'm going to shut up for the next 12 minutes till we go to break you've got the floor everything you want to cover please break it down well alex i mean you raise some very very valid points the mission of organizations like infowars and the national Enquirer is to real reveal the unvarnished truth about what occurs behind the wealth 
fortified walls of the establishment, be it Hollywood, Wall Street, uh, or the Beltway. And the discoveries that we make are very out of, often very well out of sync with how these certain individuals like the Clintons portray themselves to the public. And that disconnect is the very reason why the fourth estate exists. It's where we live at the Inquirer as a publication. And what I will tell you is that if it wasn't for the relentless coverage of certain issues, such as the sexual assault claims against Bill Cosby, it was the Inquirer that took on that story years ago before anyone else dared, when Cosby was still a beloved TV icon. And today he's finally facing justice. You know, the, the interesting thing for me about the Clintons is that the founding fathers of this country never intended for people to turn their political calling into a lifelong job. Unfortunately, we've seen the rise and rise and rise of those that consider themselves to be career politicians, the type of person that's riddled with foibles and has limitless ambition, that wants everything for themselves, self-service. That is the definition of Hillary Clinton. The Inquirer exists, like InfoWars, to hold these individuals accountable. And if it wasn't for the National Inquirer, John Edwards could well have been president instead of a laughingstock who fathered a love child and tried to lie about it. One of the most notorious figures in contemporary politics, Gary Hart, may well have ascended to power if we didn't have reveal monkey business. We've been at the very uh, front lines of investigative reporting this political election. Our coverage has been hard hitting and to many extents, it's been unrivaled by any other publication and it has been uh, bipartisan. We looked into Ben Carson and we revealed a myriad of malpractices that dealt him a very heavy blow in uh, the GOP uh, primaries. And we need to continue to investigate the Clintons. We have, and we're packaging this up, it goes to print uh, next Wednesday, yet another investigation into the power and influence that they wielded, not for the greater good, but for their own self-interest. And that is unfortunate. No person, no company, no politician, no organisation should be too rich or too influential to be able to uh, perpetuate corruption of the highest level. And we need to take it on. This is not a partisan attempt. This is a bipartisan pursuit of the truth. I agree. I mean, you've and always been bipartisan. Just to briefly interrupt with the editor-in-chief of the Inquirer, we're talking to you right now, Dylan Howard. I mean, we've talked to WikiLeaks. They've been public. They said uh, Trump's been hacked into. There's nothing there with the Russians or anything. It's all Hillary. And, and so that's the thing about Trump. He's so good compared to anybody else we've seen. I mean, if he was anywhere near Hillary, we'd be against him. I mean, I, I've been nonpartisan. It's just such a clear choice for me. There's, look, uh, you know, I don't get to vote in this election. I am an international, I'm a green card citizen of this country. We don't get to vote. Nevertheless, the reality is, ask yourself this question when you go to the ballot box. Do you want someone who has, uh, has endured or perpetuated three decades of uh, scandal, corruption and crime? Or do you want someone who may have used the P word in a video with uh, Billy Bush. A number of women have come forward and make, made allegations against Donald Trump. Some of it might be with merit. Some of it might not. Um, that we don't know. He's steadfastly denying the allegations. The women are steadfastly standing by it. But the one thing, look at the ballot box when you make that vote and ask yourself the question, do you want the Clinton crime family back in the White House or do you want to break down the borders of the establishment? Uh, please continue, but I just want to add, clearly, I mean, I mean the vote is, uh, you know, Trump's our proxy. Clearly, you're for the establishment if you vote against Trump. I mean, we've got the communist Chinese, the Saudi Arabians, every horrible, evil organization against Trump. I want to ask you why you think they're so scared, but uh, separately, since you mentioned it, uh, let's play this clip of Trump in the last debate, which really devastated Hillary, pointing at her and saying, you're the one that sent the people to attack my rallies, which is confirmed. And again, the Machiavellian nature, dressed up like Sanders supporters to demonize him, but also Trump, both are competitors. It just shows a true level of organized evil. Uh, here's that clip. 
Uh, those people, I don't know those people. I have a feeling how they came. I believe it was her campaign that did it. Just like if you look at what came out today on the clips where I was wondering what happened with my rally in Chicago and other rallies where we had such violence. She's the one in Obama that caused the violence. They hired people. They paid them $1,500, and they're on tape saying, be violent, cause fights, do bad things. I and he goes on to say that is completely illegal. It is. This is mafia. But we were taught until the 50s hearings that there was no such thing as organized crime. The head of the FBI said it because they reportedly had photos of him dressed as a woman. Whether that's true or not, the head of the FBI in the 40s and early 50s said there's no such thing as La Cosa Nostra, the family or Italian mafia. Well, there is mafia in every racial group. That's how humans organize themselves sometimes. And we know the Clintons represent this weird mafia, and it's all coming out. The reality is, for the mainstream media to turn a blind eye to Project Veritas, as they have Jeffrey Rosen, is a disservice to the voter. Um, it falls on too few to, uh, to make an impact on journalism today. The National Enquirer has been around for 90 years. We'll be around for many, many more to come. And though we are admired uh, in equal measure uh, and trusted by our readers, those that don't want to appear in the pages are those that have something to hide. We're feared and loathed. And for those that will make their decision on November 8, I would encourage them to look into the investigative reporting of my team that has been working around the clock to report this story, travelling from corner to corner of this country in order to speak with many individuals who have first-hand knowledge of this type of behaviour. They've done an outstanding job. We're not done yet. The true faith of the Clinton family, in my view, will be exposed within the next uh, seven to ten days as we put together our final issue before the November 8 election. Wow, I can't wait to read that So, because when I'm, I'm so researched on this that when I read it, it's like 99% I know it's already true because I already and then the, the little added points, it's just so, so clear. When does that final issue come out? About five, six days? Yeah, it comes out next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be on a, a nationwide newsstand next Wednesday. You know, we, we've interviewed Democrats uh, you know, outside polling places, and, and they say to us, and they, and they are the minority, it's a very small group, it's mainly women, I feel sorry for them, because the Clintons are in you know, these emails talking about what idiots they are and how blacks are dumb and the rest of it. You're just the new WikiLeaks today. It's, it's horrific stuff. And they're in there, and they say, well, you know what? She's immoral, but for a good reason. Well, that's very evil. In justifies the means. What's your view on that? Look, I think that WikiLeaks has pulled back the veneer of what we see as Hillary Clinton. And uh, I don't want to get into too much details, but suffice to say, uh, yet another individual that is close to the Clintons has broken ranks, uh, was in our office earlier this week, someone whose connections to the Clintons is undisputed. They felt compelled to come forward to uh, talk about the immoral nature and uh, behaviour of Hillary Clinton, this story by its very nature is going to rock this presidential race. Wow. It has the potential, it has the potential to swing a certain demographic of, uh, of voters towards Donald Trump and the GOP. It is an explosive story backed up by a past polygraph test and documentary evidence. Wow. Dylan Howard is the, the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer. You guys, I've never seen you hype something you don't deliver on. You always over-deliver. You're saying the big November surprise is that you have a undisputed Clinton insider about, about to drop a huge bombshell. So is it safe to say, as I've seen you do in the past, you saved the best for last? Uh, let's say it's like a game of ping pong. When you get a hold of a big story like this, you bat it across the, the other side and you see what bounce it gets. In this particular instance, Jeffrey Rovin having the, uh, the, the uh, courage to step forward, how brave he was to spill the beans for the very first time, made other individuals feel comfort that they too could tell their story. We were contacted by this individual. He flew to New York this week. We strapped him into the lie detector test. He passed with flying colours. He provided other evidence to back up his position as part of the Clinton operation. And what he tells us is a story so dramatic that I do believe that a certain 
perception of the voting public in America could be swayed by this man's revelation. Wow, Dylan Howard, it's funny. The first question I had written down here to ask you that I didn't get to was, it seems like with Mr. Rovin coming forward and others, it's causing a chain reaction of courage. You called for more federal prosecutors to go public, others too, so it seems like that's what's happening. It is, but my challenge remains to those who are involved in the Whitewater Pro. Have the courage to come forward. If you were blackmailed, tell your story, because the very freedom of this country could depend upon it. That's right. It's all on the line. We're back in three minutes. Final segment with our guest. I'm Alex Jones. We're talking to the editor-in-chief of NationalEnquirer.com, Dylan Howard. I'm Alex Jones. This is history happening. People are showing what side they're on. couple things here. We have Texas newspapers reporting vote flipping. We reported on it. Drudge linked to it twice. We have Texas election officials reporting it. We have the letterhead. We have them on local TV. We write two articles about it. Drudge links to it. Uh, Trump tweets it out, gives his sources, and Politico comes out and says, Trump claims evidence of voting fraud in Texas. Donald Trump pointed to Texas on Thursday as an example of presidential election being rigged against him. And they wanted to say without giving any evidence. Oh, but don't Snopes run by a lady with a cat. I'm not kidding. In some apartment, she says he's wrong. Uh, despite the Texas officials. This is why mainstream media is so incredibly discredited. This is why they're a joke, okay? We have all the WikiLeaks. We have them rigging the polls. We have them saying they're going to engage on all this. We have the, the top Democrats saying they're going to have people vote 10 times apiece. We have George Soros running in battleground states, a bunch of the election machines. Dylan Howard, we got about five minutes left. I really appreciate your time. Editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer, nationalenquirer.com, also Radar Online. Dot com. What do you make of this? They don't seem to get that they're lying and dissembling doesn't work anymore. Well, I think political journalism is, at this very juncture, the wild, wild west of the media. Uh, it demands a level of bipartisanship that, and accountability, I should say, that is severely lacking in almost every media outlet. You know, our reporters have brought years and decades of, of training and ethics, journalistic ethics to the table to expose the type of uh, corruption with the Clintons that we have done with great success. And I still remain um, uh, filled with hope that this type of investigative reporting can be a transformative tool and an important tool in changing the public discourse. Um, unfortunately, the way in which uh, talking heads have uh, swallowed up every inch of the television screen. It's re-engineered the way we discuss political scandals and stories, whilst not looking at the true cause and the true reporting that should be done, like what Infowars and like what the Inquirer has done. Um, so whilst I, I, I think that the medium of King Head political journalism will continue in the industry, it shouldn't thrive. We've got to get back to what um, Cal Bernstein and Bob Woodward did in uh, the Nixon administration. It was a transformative tool that was done for the greater good of this country. And it's all too easy to curate and aggregate content and rehash uh, your own opinions and the opinions and talking points of a political movement. But it is true, good old fashioned, boots on the ground reporting that the National Enquirer does that can play a pivotal role in the political discourse. We don't give up. We won't give up. Our readers deserve it. And I think the voter deserves it. That's right. Dylan Howard is the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer, nationalenquirer.com. Their big mega issue coming out next Wednesday, leaving bigger bombshells. In closing, studying history, reading the old muckrakers, the demonization of the Enquirer is because it was one of the last muckraking, old-fashioned, Mickey Spillane outfits, back when major cities had five, six, seven daily papers, sometimes three editions a day, it was all about who was muckraking. It was all about the public being informed. We go back to the robber barons 100 years ago. They said, we've got to get rid of this. We've got to buy the media up. They did that, except for a few pockets like DrudgeReport.com, the National Enquirer.com, Infowars.com, and things like that. Please pop back in next week if you can. I know you're a very busy person with uh, the latest uh, installment. And thank you for your work, uh, Mr. Howard. Thank you.
No, no worries. Anytime, Alex. Thank you. Wow. All right, folks. Hour number three now. Straight ahead with Larry Nichols, the Clinton Insider. Stay with us. All right. I want to get ready for Larry Nichols to join us. we got a bunch of other clips I haven't gotten to yet. There are just so many here to cover. In fact, I just had my video list here. I want to say, though, it is beyond amazing to see the animating contest for liberty we're all engaged in right now. And to look at these clips, Hillary's crowd at West Palm Beach rally, plenty of space. Kane's got 30 people. She's got a couple hundred. And I haven't played the video yet. We can cue that up in the next segment of her falling down or beginning to fall down again with her handler. To me, her, her falling down, her listers falling asleep is so emblematic how she's the zombie candidate. She's a zombie. Her supporters are zombies. And they're in this delusion because they buy into the whole Stockholm Syndrome that they're part of it. So I think she's quite a champion for them. We don't lose either way. Trump gets in, is a bigger fight. It's the right thing to do. Justice be done by the heavens fall. But they're going to attack him. They're going to hit him from every angle. It's, it's going to be rough. Believe me, they got a big plan B. But that's the right thing to do, so I'm supporting him. <laughs> they're dumb enough to put her in. Woo, baby. Throw me in that briar patch every day. The resistance just was assured total victory very quickly. But it's going to be a rougher road, though but very quick. Let's go to that first clip. Hillary Crowd at Palm, West Palm Beach. P plenty of space. What about the crowd? How many has she br brought out? All right, well, here it's nowhere near the size of the crowd we saw in Sanford, uh, Florida yesterday for Mr. Trump, 15,000. Take a look, Stuart. There's maybe 1,000 to 2,000 people yeah, here Trump today. Had 15, 000, the Clinton rallies 30, tend to be much smaller, and you can see there's empty space here. She's supposed to speak in about 15 minutes. A bunch minutes. of fatherless and I can tell you as the and women just totally alone, across, by the system. That if we were at a Trump rally, it's almost all just young women just stumbling around, not knowing what pets are being passed to. There was no open space. They had 15,000 people at that airport and the hangar yesterday. So as I come back into the shot, we're waiting for Hillary Clinton. She'll be here in about 15 minutes. Oh, we're going to break here. These we have Hillary supporter falls asleep. Let's go out to break with this. We, we, we may not have time, but here it is. Hillary supporter falls asleep. Let's make child care affordable and let's have more profit sharing and let's do the kinds of things that will lift everybody up. Now, you know, when I talk about raising equal pay for women as one of my primary issues. You know, Donald Trump or somebody always says, well, there she goes playing the woman card. And I got to tell you. There we go. One of the supporters I don't asleep. Believe that's what it is. I think we're paying. When she says free health care, she means federalization of your children. There's no free ride unless you're in a slave nest. Everybody's we'll be back on the other side with Larry Nichols and more. This is 11 days out. Stay with us. All right, Larry Nichols is our guest for the bottom of the hour. Anthony already takes over in the fourth hour. Uh, there is evidence of vote flipping going on all over the country. We have election officials talking about it in Texas. Politico comes out and says Trump is completely insane. There's no evidence. There's no election fraud. But the Russians are overthrowing it. Total fraud. We've got to federalize. There's no fraud, but there's total fraud. And Obamacare is free, even though it's doubled your prices and now another 25% premium increase for the lowest level people, uh, you know, in the lowest uh, bracket that has to buy it. So uh, we're all, and I've got all these clips of the architect of it, Jonathan Gruber, and one of the main people making money off of it, an architect of it, Ezekiel Emanuel, bragging, of course, it's meant to bankrupt things. <laughs> I mean, these people are jokers. I don't get why criminals, and they're criminals in my view, giggle about how you're gang raping the country. I mean, they have a sense, though, when they take they win. Not, I take from somebody, it lowers my culture and my society. I mean, if somebody's coming on at me, I'll, you know, I'll knock you down, I'll put you in the dirt, but a little satisfaction when you're there. You know, but, but I wasn't looking for the trouble. My instinct to knock you down is when you come at me, not because you're just sitting there like, a, here's a five-year-old kid, I'm an adult, let me hit him in the back of the head with a baseball bat because I can. I mean, that's the criminal energy attitude. But here's a few minutes from yesterday. This is now backfired on them. World Net Daily's reporting on it and others. Danny Williams has over 30 million views on our platforms and his platforms of his press conference, which was a bunch of Newsweek people interrupting him the whole time. It's not even that good. But the point is, 
they're scared of this because they're the mainstream media. They wish they had 30 million views in their whole career. YouTube backs off on ban of Clinton's black son. Here's what happened yesterday live. With less than 12 days left before the most historic election in U.S. history, we're seeing massive censorship being intensified. Now, Danny Williams is reportedly Bill Clinton's illegitimate son from a black prostitute in Little Rock, Arkansas. And Bill Clinton has basically been caught giving him money and presents over the years. But I interviewed his aunt 20 years ago and have thought this story was extremely credible. The man's very handsome. He looks a lot like Bill Clinton. And regardless of what you say about Bill Clinton, when he was young, he was a handsome guy. But now that YouTube has shut down a video that had incredible millions and millions of views, and we now learn is shutting down other videos of Danny Williams across the web, it only adds credibility now i just hung up with him minutes ago we taped it live here it is this is what hillary clinton is scared of and does not want you to see and that's the key this adds a lot of credibility they do not want you to see this <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 20 years ago, I interviewed Danny Williams' aunt. Bill Clinton, for years, sent $700 a month to their home, sent Christmas presents. Danny Williams is a spitting image of Bill Clinton. We had him on a few weeks ago, and it was big international news. Then, last week, hours before the debate, there was to be a big press conference. Hundreds of cameras were there. CNN came and threatened the hotel and said this press conference isn't happening. They told Danny it was canceled. Then we later learned that was a fraud and about 15 members of the press covered it. There were more than 20 million views on Facebook and YouTube of the live conference that our reporters covered. Now, Danny Williams, we've learned today, had his YouTube channel with over 2 million views on his press conference, just on that channel, the number one video on YouTube deleted. And in fact, if in a moment, if Joe Biggs will come in for TV viewers, we can show folks a shot of this where they've told him his account is suspended and that's the end of it for community violations. This is just where they have a bunch of Democratic tattletales say we don't like something and it's banned. So whether you believe a story is true or not, I know it's true. The evidence is overwhelming. What's incredible is they're attempting to cover all of this up. So when the time comes, we'll do a document cam shot for TV viewers uh, and get a shot of this in a moment. But but Danny Williams, who I just got on the phone, he's driving to go pick up his kids. Uh, as he drives through Arkansas in the middle of nowhere, Danny Williams is here. He's going to tell you what's happened to his YouTube channel with massive censorship. Danny, thank you for joining us. Go ahead and tell folks what's happening. Yes. Uh, basically, today... Uh we found out earlier last night that they kicked out the YouTube channel saying that, you know, uh, it was a violation of the community or whatnot uh, for the social media then. But technically, I got over so many viewers and a lot of good response. I don't feel like I did anything to violate anyone, but, yeah, they kicked it out and, and we're trying to, you know, figure that out right now, so... Well, they've done this to me whenever I expose, say, reports of Bill Clinton or rape or whatever. They'll say community guidelines strike where people complain. They say, yeah, we think this is mean, so they take it down. I've had videos about World War III they take down. But, I mean, here you are, very polite in the press conference video they took down. There's a copy of it on Infowars.com as well. We just had another video taken down last week with us. They're trying to shut down our channel right now. So there's a real push 12 days out from this election. Talk about what was on the video that they've banned. I mean, it was nothing negative. I mean, no profanity. All I did was speak about the story of me, Danny Williams, and my claim and more than my DNA test. That's what all of they say. All right, we're going to fade that down. I want to go to Larry Nichols, but that full interview that they've tried to censor his press conferences up on Infowars.com. But the fact that this press conference he did got over 30 million views on four different platforms total. Our platforms were like 2 million and 3 million, 5 million, but his platforms were over 25 million. That's really got to scare the power structure. And, and Larry Nichols, the consummate Clinton insider, one of the main sources for the Inquirer reports that are so dead on that are coming out, joins us right now from Arkansas. Uh, to, to, to break down the latest developments and where he sees all this going. Larry, thank you for joining us. You bet, Alex. How are you? 
My head's spinning 11 days out. I mean, how do you see this whole thing? Well, I can tell you where I see it. I believe Donald Trump's winning. I believe, Alex, it's uh, time now for us to tell people exactly what to do to fight voter fraud. And what they're going to do, Alex, is, they're, you know, we've talked about them bringing in, I'm trying to get in the center of the shot, I'm sorry. Uh, what they're trying to do is they'll be bringing in vans, which, you know, I told you about over a year ago, and well, now you've got the tape where they're actually saying they're doing it. Well, there's another thing that we've all got to do. Number one, when you go cast your vote, here's what you better do. If it's a touch screen computer, Make sure that that precinct shows you a recorded, a printed proof of how your vote was recorded. Now, we've gotten, I've already gotten several, several responses, Alex, where people, one lady in Georgia voted for straight line Republican. When she saw proof of what she voted for, she had voted for Clinton. And it took her four or five times to get them to rerun it before it ever showed voting for Trump. So what you've got to do is you've got to make the people at the precinct prove your vote was recorded properly. Now, if they can't show you proof, then demand a paper ballot. Demand it. They're supposed to have paper ballots, but if they don't find out where you've got to go to get a paper ballot, because Alex, when you're on these computers, I heard you earlier say, that Soros owns the voting equipment that's used in 16 states. He does. But what people don't realize is he owns the majority of several other voting machine companies, but he owns them. No, I knew that. I mean, mean, that's come out in the last 10 years. And and so, bottom line, Hillary's got to be really upset, though, that Trump isn't just going quietly into the night. He's openly exposing all that. How does that upset her apple cart? (laughs) Alex, she... She's going to lose, and she knows it, unless she can amass and pull off the biggest amount of voter fraud in the history of this country. Now, I agree. Aren't preliminaries, as we're getting from early voting, showing landslide for Trump? Well, yeah, and and I don't know that it'll be a landslide, but I can tell you this. Hillary's defeated, and she knows it, so they've got to cheat. Now, to back that up so you don't think I'm just making this up, the DNC filed a lawsuit to try to force the removal of poll watchers at the polls. Now, uh-huh. why would they do that if they know there's no cheating going on? Why would they fight the, you know, photo ID to vote? Why do that if they don't plan to have massive voter fraud? Look, I say this to your audience, Alex, please. It, this is your vote. You got one. You've got one. You got to protect it. If you allow your vote to be changed, then we've lost. We've lost all. No, I agree. We, we expose it. Up. We show the fraud. We have millions of people reported if it happens. It's game over just from perception. Now, I've looked at the internals, as I know you have, of several polls. Here's what they're doing. They're trying right now, Alex, to make everybody believe this election is over. For the next 11 days, it's going to be the media, mainstream media, and Hillary's job and her campaign to make people believe this election is over. Oh, they say uh, from CNN to to, to MSNBC to the New York Times, she's already measuring the new drapes. They say she's in. It's done. Well, let me tell you why that is. Hillary's already got every vote she's going to get, Alex, and they know it. They know there's nothing they can do to increase that. So they've got one move left, and that's to convince people that are going to vote for Trump, you might as well stay home, mow your yard, go to a movie, do something worthwhile because the race is over. Don't waste your time. Folks, do not believe it. When I looked at the internals last week of a poll, that was an MS, uh, it was a, gosh, a Wall Street Journal. NBC poll. Now, Fox News reported it as the gold standard of polls. When you looked into the internals of that poll, Alex, here's what you find. 60% of the people interviewed, or 60% of the respondents, were Democrats. Stay there. Let's go to the rest of it. Oh, that's in WikiLeaks. They're oversampling across the board like we're the biggest idiots in the world. It's like starting a football game and giving the other team 15, 14 points. (laughs) I mean, a two-year-old would know that's a fraud. They're against Donald Trump.
who promises a new deal for black Americans. I'll be honest with you, I'm not for unweight just in measures, but when it comes to weights and measures, I don't want political correctness and a bunch of division and a bunch of uh, garbage like we've seen with affirmative action. But cut taxes even more in the black inner city areas, have incentives to bring businesses in, don't have the Soros control groups, activate groups of terrorists to burn stuff down. I want prosperity. That's the way to help folks and bring down the crime. And that's what Trump's promising to do. Clinton will never even give a speech directed at black people, and neither will Obama, because they think they got you. Bottom line, Trump wants prosperity. Larry Nichols will be with us a little bit in the next segment. I want to open the phones up on the incredible moment we're at, the election fraud around the country. Vote at Infowars.com is the email for you to send videos, articles, news tips, your personal tips, photos, you name it, of evidence of election fraud in the next 11 days, the next 12 days, right through the election. We're, we're really 12 days out right now, but 11 until election day. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. But I tell you, it is an amazing time to be alive. Trump has crowds of 40, 50,000 when they've got big enough arenas, 10,000 know, capacity when they're smaller. Hillary has a couple hundred. Kane has 30. Uh, the fix is in, though. They are really driving forward right now with everything they've got. And I've got to say, Larry Nichols, uh, I, I know you're battling cancer right now. You don't like to talk about it. And you're, you'd be out on the street if it wasn't for... You know, folks support you because you're battling 18 hours a day, even fighting lung cancer to do this. So you didn't you know, really push for this, but I'm going to put it on screen. Folks to make small donations, you name it, won't get stolen at the Clinton Foundation. will go right to you to help you with your cancer treatments. You can stay on air. Nichols Live at AOL.com. Nichols Live at AOL.com or Larry Nichols. 58 Kingsons Drive. You're one of the main sources for the Inquirer piece. They, they said that on air. Again, really fighting hard, folks. Larry Nichols, 58 Kingsons Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. So we're all in this together, and I hope someday if I'm, you know, by myself with nothing and fighting cancer, folks will support me as well as I'm, if I'm a guest on air. Uh, but, Larry, just, just in closing, you can hold longer if you want to take calls. What other dirty tricks do you expect? Where is this going? Well, exactly what they're going to do is they're going to bring vans into the inner city precincts, Alex. That's where the multiple... And you've said that a million times. Now place. we have Veritas on video showing. Now you've got proof of it. You know, Alex, before I go off today, I'm going to break a little news right here with you. You've been such a good friend all these years. So before I go off, give me just a moment, because I'm going to send a personal message to Bill and Hillary, something that happened years ago, a promise I made, and I'd like to resolve it. But having said that, I just want everybody to understand the polling is a part of this game plan to destroy your confidence and your ability to win. You're winning. You're winning. You really are. You've just got to stay the course. You know, they're going to cheat in every way possible. Every way possible. They're going to have the phones loaded up on talk shows. Come election day when you listen to programs other than this one, when you go to your local radio programs or whatever, they're going to have phone banks set up, Alex, by the hundreds to call in. You're going to see a push by the mainstream media. I already know what they're doing. I already have advanced information on the push they're going to make with the mainstream media starting the Friday before Election Day on the following Tuesday. And we got more time, so we'll get to it the next segment. But exactly, they admit they're going to hit C-SPAN, all the national shows to create the perception, mm -hmm. the perception that Trump lost and it's a huge defeat. It is. And believe it or not, guys, that works if you're not careful. There's but if our listeners know, and they all call 10 shows that day, if they get really aggressive, it's game over. <laughs> That's right. If you'll stay the course, and, and what y'all got to do now, it's Alex, it's not me and you anymore. It's your audience now. When your people, your friends come up to you, your family come up to you, and they start throwing it at you, well, you know, Trump's done, he's dead, he can't win. I'm for him, but he just can't win. Your audience has got to carry the message, Alex. You and I can't And by the way, anymore. I've even got people close to me saying that, and I just am so sad they're weak-minded. Now, the other thing I'm so proud to see you put up, a site to report the broad cases because if they rig this election and pull it off, it's going to be imperative that Donald Trump have a place to go where the fraud 
is actually recorded. Well, it's going to be StopTheSteal.com, InfoWars.com, DrudgeReport.com, Breitbart.com. <laughs> We're all going to have it. Now, what I'd like to do is tell you what you've got to do to report voter fraud. When you go into your voter precinct, you make sure. Stay there. Come back and tell us about that in your message directly to the Clintons. And you'll ride shotgun with us when we take phone calls from Shane and Bill and Steve and James and others. I'm Alex Jones. This is the desperate defense of our republic, and it is desperate. But the good news is that people are rising to the occasion, and people are seeing through what's happening. And I'm just seeing incredible support for Trump. People that even don't like him get. This is a vote against the establishment that's been screwing us for hundreds of years. You see, we were always under attack by a foreign corporate takeover. So for 20 years, I've said, we now take you live to Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. Because I figured I would wake up other people that would be the heart of the resistance. We'd beat it that way. I didn't figure out we'd be the main resistance. You'd be it, but it's, it's here, it's happening. And as people get the fact that, wait, the EU's unelected, our system's unelected, we're losing our freedoms, it's game over for the globalists. So they're in trouble. They're going to try to mop up the resistance if they get into office. If we get Trump in, it's a big victory, but the fight really does just begin. I want to go to your phone calls. Larry Nichols is riding a shotgun with us. Larry Nichols, other points you want to impart to the audience? Well, the main thing, when you go to that precinct and you can't get verification of your vote, or you find that they have verified it, but your vote keeps getting switched to Hillary, here's what you do. Report it first to the precinct person there, the head of the precinct, then you need to call the police and tell them that voter fraud was just committed against you, you suspect. And then number three, very important. That's right, you've got, oh, I just want to interrupt, you've got standing because you're a citizen, fraud is against exactly. you and the country. Start over, start over. Well, it's a federal crime. So listen, number one, make sure they verify your vote to you that what you voted actually was recorded. Number two, if they can't do that, then ask for a paper ballot. If they refuse to give you a paper ballot, find out where you've got to go to get one. Now, if that doesn't happen and you see that your vote has been twiddled with, as many people have already seen, then I, you need to tell them. you got to do it this way or it's not going to help Mr. Trump if he has to file suit. you got to notify the precinct person in charge, call the police, tell them what just happened, and then... Get in touch with Alex. You can go to our site, LarryNichols.info, and log in and report the voter fraud that you've just experienced. Now, there's one other thing, Alex, people need to do, and we'll get off of this. I'd like to see every one of you make a sign. Put a sign together that says, protect your vote. And I mean stand the legal distance away from the, from the voting place. But protect your vote and tell people these very simple things. You know, verify your vote is recorded the way you cast it. I mean, just tell them what we said. You can go to LarryNichols.info and I'll give or I'll send it to Alex even where you can see. No, I agree. We're going to post side. a page. We're going to post a page uh, at Infowars.com forward slash vote tomorrow. But right now the email to report stuff is vote at Infowars.com. But you're right. We should go out the legal distance, whatever it is in the state. Sit there, hand right. out flyers, explain, hey, make sure they don't flip it. People are ready to hear the truth. They're ready to be involved. That way we have an army of people, if there is fraud, which we know is already happening, that are going to report this. And this could completely blow up in Hillary's face. And notice, as you said, Larry, they're trying to claim you can't you have poll watchers. Right. You can't have right. exit pollers. They're trying to demonize myself. Roger Stone claiming we're wanting to frustrate the vote. No, they're the ones that said election fraud didn't exist, but the Russians are taking over imminently. Well, number one about the Russians, Alex, it, let me tell you, if the Russians were tapping into the State Department email, there would be a file made against the Russians in the United Nations Security Council, and no such filing or complaint has been filed. So they're lying through their teeth about that. That's well, of course they are. That's an act of war. And instead, it's George yeah. Soros and the Pentagon, not the yeah. military's bad, but people around the Pentagon are trying to start war with Russia. By the way, how does now, that wild card, what are other wild cards with 10 and a half days, 11 days out, what could they pull? Uh, really, they're out. Alex, they're out. They have fired everything against Donald Trump that they can possibly file, fire. I mean, the only thing they can do is try to stack some more women's stuff on him, but that's not going to come and out. And I agree. They Hillary looks really desperate. Under. She almost fell yeah. down in Florida. Uh, what do you make of their body language? They look like wet dogs. I know. I know.
And just like I used to tell you about Bill Clinton, how do you know when he's lying and he's frustrated? Look at his nose. It'll light up like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Watch Hillary's bags under her eyes. When she gets frustrated, when she gets mad, when she's about to snap, those bags under her eyes pooped out. That's always been a problem. We tried to cover it up back then, and we couldn't. It just shows right up. So you watch her eyes. When those bags are popping out of her, below her eyes, you know that lady's... By the way, I've people. seen it when Bill Clinton's nose gets red during press conferences. It does. Now, there's one other thing you had the inquire guy on. They'll be, he was talking about a prosecutor involved in the Whitewater. Yeah, there's he said something big next week, on. and her calling black people N-words coming out next week. Right. Well, there's going to be another story coming out about the Star investigation. And I think you are going to be shocked to find out. I don't know if it's in the next week's article, but you're going to find out why Kenneth Starr rolled over on the Foster invest Vince Foster investigation. Well, he was implying they were setting up prosecutors with hookers. Well, you know, I think I told you that story a few years ago, Alex, how they had put moved two hookers in on Kenneth Starr at a health spa on Cantrell. And then the next day when he had the hookers, the next day he started spinning. And that's why Miguel Rodriguez quit because he knew what Starr had got caught doing and they were blackmailing him. And he shut the case down. That's why the case went nowhere. I mean, this bunch rules by fraud. They rule by intimidation, blackmail, extortion. That's what we've got coming if they're elected. And if I may, before we take the calls, I want to make a direct message to Bill and Hillary, please. And we'll move in here close, Bill, so you can see my eyes. Years ago, the day before you left to go to Washington, left Arkansas for the last time, you wanted to meet with me, you and Buddy Young, your chief security. You met with me under a bridge on the Wilbur Mills Freeway about a block away from the state capitol. Now, I know you probably hadn't told Hillary, but you better tell her. You told me, I told you that day, remember it, Bill, I told you that day, one day you and I were going to meet at high noon, and one of us was going to get out of town. Well, buddy, you know what happened? You got wounded. I helped wound you when you were president, got you impeached, but you came back from that. Well, let me tell you, November the 8th, Bill, Hillary, that's high noon. You're getting out of town. Now, even if you don't, Get out of town. If you're managed to cheat, let me tell you what's coming. Now, first off, if you lose, let me complete high noon. If you lose, your name's going to be destroyed forever. Your legacy is destroyed. Your Clinton Foundation, let me tell you about that, Bill Hillary. You've got nothing to sell, so nobody's going to pay you. Nothing. Now, even if you win, even if you win, here's what you're going to be plagued with, Hillary, before you think you're going to measure the curtains and walk in there and rule America the way you've been dreaming of for, since you were four years old. Let me tell you what's going to happen. The day you set foot in the White House, you're going to be under investigation every day for impeachment for the crimes you've committed against the people of this nation. So, Bill, Hillary, you remember this day. High noon is November the 8th. And I keep my word. Thank you. Thanks, Alex, for letting me do that. I well, I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, it is high noon, and I agree with you. And I, every other analyst agrees. The WikiLeaks and the rest of it is so devastating yeah. that even if they steal it, this is a hundred times Nixon. They will never, never, never get away with this. I mean, we have them open and shut. Thousands of felonies, every angle, covering up. The espionage, I mean, my God. I know there's a different power structure, but what do you think the different special interests are thinking right now? I think special interests are getting bad and nervous. They've invested billions of dollars into this couple. And you know what, Alex? They're seeing what I just told Bill and Hillary. They're seeing it all come unglued. They're seeing that all this investment over the years they've made in Hillary. And Bill, it's gone. That's bad money. Gone money. They're not going to have the power to rule. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, Alex, can you imagine the Clinton Foundation after this election? What's it going to be able to do? What's he going to be able to do for these foreign countries that have been paying millions of dollars to him? Nothing. And that's even if she gets elected. Nothing. The cat's out of the bag. And by the way, for those of you that think, well, if she gets to be president, then there's no way she can be prosecuted. Remember, we prosecuted Bill Clinton, got him impeached over an act he did before he was president. And that's one with one Paul millionth Jones. of what we've got now. Great point. Larry, we're going to call us here in just a moment. I, I know this. It, it, look.
and, and, and we're going to your calls. If the Clintons were just boss hogs and just trying to get rich, I'd oppose them because I'm a moral guy. I don't want corruption to grow, but I wouldn't be risking my life. The Clintons are so evil and so bad and so out to destroy prosperity, my very cells, my very gut says, do everything you got, throw yourself against it, no matter how dangerous it is, my spirit just says, good, good, get more aggressive, go crazy. And what is it, though, Larry, about the, uh, the Clintons that just make me want to throw myself at them to stop them? Because I don't have any fear. And, I, and Bush was bad. I exposed him, and it was dangerous, but I didn't have that same feeling that I wanted to go after him. I just morally had to do it. What is it about them? Alex, the difference, I think, in your case is the same as it is, I hope, in many Americans. When you were talking about Bush or any of the other presidents we've had, we've had political differences. They had political directions they were going to take us. We didn't want to go liberal or whatever. The Clintons, it's not that, Alex. The Clintons want to change the foundation, foundational principles of America. They want to destroy America. It goes back to the first day I ever met Hillary Clinton. She had around her neck a, a card like a press pass that said a proud member of the United States Communist Party. They're taking us full to communism. And they're going to take us there, force us there with health care. They're going to force us there with all their maneuvers, or that was their plan. But it's falling apart on them. That's what Rona calls in a moment. First off, some of our great sponsors that have made today's broadcast possible. Based right here in Texas, United States Gold Vault. Uh, you and your family need to be protected when we have another economic meltdown, which clearly we're already seeing worldwide. I believe the economic crash is coming, and you should protect yourself with real money. Do you want to be a victim, or do you want to be prepared? Take action with the company I trust, United States Gold Vault. Call them today at 844-321-ALEX. They've created a game-changing gold and silver survival packs filled with physical gold and silver coins that could help safeguard you when you need it most in a financial crisis. Real money, not paper. A lot of my personal retirement or backup is in gold and silver. Don't wait till it's too late. Call the United States Gold Vault now at 844-321-ALEX. You'll get a rugged double locking bank bag. Securely store your gold and silver absolutely free. Also, some solutions from science. That's where I got a solar generator 10 years ago. They obviously updated it since then. And then another one a year ago. It's what I have in my home. It's amazing. Their latest uh, unit is called the Perfect Power Generator. And they're selling it below cost. They've never done this in 10 years, 15 years being a sponsor. It's their top-of-the-line model. It's expandable, so you can make it as powerful as you want to. Normally around $6,000. They're letting them go for $1,500 or less. Visit PowerGridChaos.com. That's PowerGridChaos.com. And get yours before they're gone. PowerGridChaos.com. And then finally, I want to tell you about Revelations, a movie five years in the making with myself, Charlie Daniels, uh, Gerald Salente, uh, General Jerry Boykin, former head of Special Forces, G. Edward Griffin, and so many others. New film directed by Chuck Undersea. It covers a range of topics such as privacy, since 21, the Federal Reserve, globalism versus nationalism, and much more. The plan to implode the country, you name it. Visit revelationthemovie.info. That's Revelation the Movie, one word, revelationthemovie.info to purchase the DVD or check out how you can host it in your area or local theaters. Revelationthemovie.info. Revelation with Charlie Daniels and more now available. Okay, let's go to some phone calls here with Larry Nichols. We got Shane and Bill and Steve and James and Mark and many others been holding patiently. Uh, let's go to Shane in North Carolina. You're on the air. Yeah, hey, um, I was listening to your show on Sunday, and uh, you were talking to a caller, and you were mentioning the way I led for Trump movement, and you were kind of thinking, like, where did that come from? It actually came, um, I called into your show before the RNC and suggested that people wear red. I remember, I remember, and then and then Owen Schroyer recommended, and others picked it up, and now it's happening all over the country. Uh, I do remember your call, uh, Shane, so it shows how, you know, big things start small. We're even selling a shirt at cost, 60% off. Trump is my president that's red to really get the word out so people understand optically that we're the majority. Uh, so great idea, Shane. It's, 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 it's happening. Yeah, it's really cool to see how things um, can get spearheaded like that. And uh, this is a pretty big bug. Yeah, because there's not teleprompters here, man. You are directly interfacing with the people. I mean, that's. I mean, I love the fact we're for real. You know. Absolutely, man. And um, you know, I'm definitely fired up about you know about voting here in a few days. I'm going to um, vote early. I'm in North Carolina, and you know, I, it's been a crazy election, like you said, the wildest one we've ever seen. Um, you know, early on, I was actually pretty skeptical of Trump. I think it's, um, I think it's intelligent to be skeptical. But um, it, basically, it became evident, you know, 
after the months went by, it, was, it, was, it became pretty obvious. Yeah, when the entire evil power structure is against somebody, I mean, it makes you it, it, it makes the choice clear. Larry, you got any comments on that? Thanks, Shane. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the this is the battle of battles for the nation. This election day, November eighth, Alex, you and I. Have yeah, said forget it, Trump. I mean, I'll be frank. I'm never less That's than two right. evils. Forget Trump. This is all about the new world order now. Go, go ahead. It is. This is this is the biggest battle since the Revolutionary War. We're either going to be free or we're going to be in bondage all over again. And if you don't believe it, you just didn't live in Arkansas when the Clintons were in power. And remember, they are the mob. You know, Alex, I couldn't help it when you were talking to Mr. Howard. Just think about what I've had to go through fighting these people for some 28 years. I mean, these people are evil. These people are tough. And their organization is broad and it's powerful. But thanks to the people of this country, this election, November 8th, I think it's coming to an end. Obviously, when Hillary calls me dark heart and went off script, the only time in that speech to call me dark heart, was that scripted or does she really hate me that much? She hates you that much. Don't, don't doubt that. Hillary hates you probably. You're probably getting about as big a hate as she's got for me. Maybe not quite, but you're bad close. And that's not going to be a comfortable position for you if she wins. However... I think the power that they plan to use when they get in when they get in office, if they win, is going to be greatly diminished now. I was about to say, I'm not lionizing the FBI or these agencies. They hate her so much because she they know she hates them. She hates real men. That's right. Uh, despite the fact that they're killers, a lot of them, they are so ready to leak every damn thing she does. If she thinks WikiLeaks okay. is bad, go ahead, lady. Yeah, just go out there and fire your shot. Let me tell you, the problem they've got in the FBI, they may have gotten to Comey. They may have gotten to his, you know, number one assistant or assistant to the head of the FBI with that $500,000 contribution. That's fine. Do all of that. But look who broke out like the leaks to the Wall Street Journal. It was the FBI agents themselves. These guys are Americans, just as American as you or I. And they're not into destroying this country. That's where she's going to have trouble. Well, that's the thing. She wants to mount our head on the wall. She's the one pushing everybody to the edge. Mm -hmm. But here again, I have, because of the Wall Street Journal article, I have faith now in the people of the FBI, maybe not the FBI as such. Well, it's true that they said the FBI is on the edge of complete mutiny right now. They are. And I think you're going to find that in the CIA. I think you're going to find that in the NSA. You know, all of these alphabet soup people, Alex, they've been ruled. They've been ruled by this cabal of Obama, Clintons. I mean, it hadn't been pleasant for them. And they resent it, and they hate it. Yeah, they resent being told to side with criminals, side with Islamists, you name Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, I tell you, the globalists, that's why the globalists are scared. They know. We're going to come back and talk to uh, Bill and Steve and James and Reggie and Mark and others. Our guest is Larry Nichols. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com. Get those articles. Get those videos out. They're powerful. By the way, Hillary's live on Fox News right now with Michelle Obama bitching about Trump and some edited 11-year-old crap that Bush admitted he egged him into saying. I mean, the thing's so edited, it's incredible. I noticed she's wearing prison jumpsuit orange, so that's her good color with Michelle. I'm shooting a video today about the worst rappers that rap about date rape, which, by the way, pisses me off because they target kids with this stuff, and it's hard to keep my kids away from it. And meanwhile, then she blames Trump for his edited tape hurting kids when they're the ones that put it out. I mean, Michelle Obama is just a disgusting pig, and it makes me sick. Larry Nichols, what do you make of all this uh, dishonesty by these people? It's just the way they are, Alex. It's just the way they are, buddy. I mean, that's what you sense. That's what you know. That's what's bothering you. I, I don't know how else to say it. It's pure evil. I mean, and, and I'm not a great Christian, so please don't think I'm getting out of my pay grade. But these people represent pure evil. The difference is you are a great Christian. You love God. You recognize you're evil. Yeah. They love evil. We hate evil. I mean, just think about what they're doing to the Catholics. Think what they're doing to the religions. All what do you make the of the place. new WikiLeaks confirming what you said, where they say David Brock thinks black people are dumb and more witnesses coming forward about how, how she hates poor people? Uh, that, that's that's Hillary. That's the Hillary I know. That's the Hillary that always resented black people. She thought they were stupid. She thought they should be. She thought they still look better in chains, is what she used to say. And then she publicly said they need to be made to heal like a dog super predator. Can you elaborate on that? 
Well, yeah, I mean, it, look, Bill and Hill. Now, Bill had a fetish for black women. That's why he was called the black president. Hillary's not that way. Bill's just an old good time boy. He didn't care about governing. He, he just wanted the perks of office. Hillary, that's the one you got to watch. She's the one that's hardcore about this stuff. And she believes everyone, everyone, Alex, and if you don't believe me, ask anybody that's ever worked for her. She believes everybody that's not her is her servant. And I'm talking about the American people. I'm talking about the blacks. You're foolish, black Americans. If you follow her, she's going to lead you to hell. I guarantee you that. Wow. Let's take a few more calls. Larry Nichols is our guest. Bill in Arizona, you're on the air. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. And uh, Mr. Nichols, I wanted to say that your movies are something that everyone should watch about the Clintons. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and I want to—I called to tell you that, uh, firstly, I, I was going to tell you about the signs, but I wanted to make one comment about your conversation, and that is I have a 16-year-old daughter, and I told her after hearing all this stuff about Hillary this last week, I, I told her that your, your own people that will tell you things— because they uh, are actually putting what they are doing uh, uh, onto themselves that they think that someone else is doing. And that's exactly what the Hillary and them do, is that they say, oh, it's somebody else, but it's really them. And my daughter came well, back the next day and she said that she thought that was really true. But the reason I wanted to call you was that I actually live in a very small town on the edge of the Mexican border and down in southern Arizona. And we're a town that's been notorious for uh, supporting Hillary, as in we had a Hillary art car. And the, during the 2008, our town was just plastered with Hillary signs. And then when it switched to Obama, they all switched to Obama. But this year, this Sunday, I actually made a point of driving around my neighborhood, the last three, three towns, actually. And I only found four Hillary signs. That was it. And the, even her support here does not really exist. So I just wanted to let you guys know that really she has no support, no matter what they claim. Well, that's going to be, there's a couple of things you said that I think are very important. Number one, and let me just say this out front, the black vote that Bill got, that Obama got, they're worried about that vote. Oh, she may get 80% of it. She might even get 90%, but the problem she has with the blacks, they're not going to come out and vote for her. They don't like her. They're not going to show up and vote. And so I instead of actually that, voting for Trump, it's just they're not going to show up. They're just not going to show up. Now, the other thing you were talking about them doing or saying what other people are doing is actually what they're doing. I designed that for them years ago. That was how I knew that we could accuse somebody of something and prove it because we were doing it, Alec. Yeah, it's like exactly accusing Trump of being a Russian spy. And then meanwhile, Hillary takes money from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. All right, thank you. I know you got to go. We're going to come back in the fourth hour. Stay with me, folks. More calls straight ahead. There goes Larry Nichols. Stay with us. Paul Watson's got a new video up on Infowars.com. This is a story I went to cover on Monday, four days ago. Universities all over the country are going to send the police out to ticket you for disorderly conduct if someone doesn't like your costume. The proof is that someone doesn't like it. So this is the new bullying social justice warrior thing. When you hear this, Alex Jones is bullying the government. He should be arrested. That's the new liberal thing. They want to shut your free speech down. Zombie outfits or sexy po Pocahontas costumes can get you in trouble. So this is just training that you have no free speech by the so-called liberals to claim everybody's got free speech. So good luck with that. I mean, you people are literally delusional mind control idiots who think everybody's going to listen to you. You've just gotten to the point now we're trying to tell us how to operate, how to live. That's blowing up in your face right now. David Knight's coming up in the next segment. We'll continue with your phone calls. A lot of breaking news. we got Friday's edition tomorrow. Tomorrow will be 10 days. 10 days out. And the 11th day is the election. So Fox says it's 11 days. We're saying it's, you know, 10 days tomorrow. But whatever. Whatever. All the calendar you know, folks say it's, it's 10 days tomorrow. They say 11. Clearly, we'll know by the 11th day. So we're 11 days out. This is the longest campaign I've ever covered. The longest campaign anybody's ever covered. This is crazy. Huge evidence of election fraud coming in. Politico says there's no such evidence. It doesn't exist. In the next article, the feds are going to take over the elections to protect us from imminent fraud that doesn't exist. Steve in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Yeah, in 2014, <clears throat> I knew God was giving his true patriots a mandate to stop Hillary and that and I've been. And I prayed for God to send the man. He sent the man. His name is Donald Trump.
Okay, so he's not perfect. I, I, I remember telling mom and dad that I was going to stop. I was voting to stop Hillary. That I wouldn't concede the election to Hillary, even if she won. Well, here's the deal. He never claimed to be an angel. They edited the tape, and if any real Christian wants to shake your finger at him, they haven't read the Bible. King David had his best friend killed. He was overwhelmed with lust for the guy's wife. Now later, he truly repented. Mom and Dad said, "Well, what does the Bible say about groping ladies and fondling them and?" Insane. Bill Clinton's a damn race. Look, look, they set Trump up. They knew he was going to run for president for 30 years. They sat there, they edited it, but I'm not even defending. It's not even about Trump. It's not even lesser two evils. Hillary is a manifest demon. Everything's a fraud. We know she's a criminal. And so Trump is coming against them. And, and again, I'm going to explain this. I say this over and over again, not to make everybody feel good. It's the truth. Trump has already won. The New World Order is in shambles. We've already won by backing a populist. The mainstream media is falling apart. They're a joke. I appreciate your call, Steve. James in New York, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, uh, pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. Uh, so, basically, I'm an 18-year-old from New York, and a lot of us youth, uh, youth teens here in New York, we're all back to Trump, and I think it's a huge part uh, to Trump's election. I think there's going to be a giant youth turnout for Trump. Listen, I've talked to folks Hillary. that live in New York. I've talked to Daria, whose parents live there. They say everyone they know is supporting Trump. No, the, all you see is Trump signs. So so wh what do you think is about to happen? I honestly think that there will be... I mean, record, record, 18 to 25-year-olds, record numbers in Republican votes because they know what Hillary's about. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i surprised Hillary's even made it this far. I mean, I look back to 2008, even with the establishment, with the, uh, the crash of the, uh, uh, the stock, stock market. I mean, only one person was arrested through that whole fraudulent banking system. I mean, if that doesn't show corruption, even in 2008, and it took a while to be picked up until now, and now we're like, Okay, well, now it's really... Exactly. All right, great points, James. Keep up the good work. I'm going to hand the baton right now to David Knight. Um, we got Mark in Oregon wants to talk about the polls. we got R Reggie and, and Lisa and Carlos and others. I'm sure Dave probably wants to take your calls. But regardless, it's up to him. Vote at Infowars.com is where you report. Elections being clean, elections being smooth, or frauds in your video, audio, text, there. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Thursday, October 27th, 2016. I'm David Knight. We're going to go back to your calls, uh, Mark, Reggie, Lisa, Carlos, in just a moment. If you want to hang on, I'll probably get to you in the next segment because I want to lay down a couple of breaking news items. But before I get to the news, I just want to remind you that we've got some massive specials at InfoWars. Uh, we've got 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food. It's an amazing discount now is the time to prepare. There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we talk about the uh, situation that Hillary Clinton has created across the world, setting up, uh, re restarting the Cold War with her Russian reset. Who knows what she's going to do? This is a woman who has created wars across the world. Who knows what's going to happen to the economy? They're holding the line on interest rates and other issues because they don't want to rock the boat for Hillary Clinton before the election. So now is the time, while everything is uh, stable, now is the time to take advantage of a massive sale on storable foods. 30 to 40% off at InfoWarsStore.com. And, of course, these are the made-in-America, GMO-free, high-quality storage, shelf life of 25 years. Take a look at what we have at InfoWarsStore.com, the InfoWars Select Storable Food. Also, we have the ProPure top-of-the-line filter, the G2.0 King Gravity Water Filter, now 30% off InfoWars store, and we have still continued, and it's not going to last much longer, the Brain Force Special, 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. And as I said, that's my favorite supplement that we have. It makes a big difference. Now, real quickly, we've got news that's breaking today, and uh, I heard this on the radio as I was coming in. They're talking about this scam that has ripped off about 15,000 people for a total of about $300 million. And what they're doing is they're calling up these victims. They say that uh, uh, they're threatening them with fine and deportation or imprisonment if they don't pay demanded fees. In other words, they tell them, hey, we're from the government, uh, you're an illegal alien, and we're going to throw you out of the country if you don't pay these fees. Now, when I looked at this, I thought, 
how is this different from Hillary Clinton? <laughs> scaring people into giving her money, scaring people into voting for her. And it's interesting because there's a lot of stories about it. They're going to get not only the FBI, but the IRS against these people. Now, we've had a lot of stuff breaking in the last couple of days. And finally, we've got a story that has traction with the mainstream media about Clinton corruption, about Clinton pay for play. We got the New York Times, the Washington Post, uh, USA Today, even Morning Joe was talking about this memo from Doug Ban, the guy who ran the Clinton Foundation, talking about self-referencing this whole operation as Bill Clinton Inc. Bill Clinton Inc. In other words, it's an incorporation. It's how they make their money. Now, I got to say, I, I'm not going to hold my breath. I don't think the FBI is going to investigate the Clintons. Well, you know they aren't. We know that uh, she can do whatever she wants, violating national security. Of course, they're not going to have the IRS investigate them either. No, they're going to use the IRS against their political enemies. So we've already seen that throughout the Obama administration. But that's really what should be happening in this situation. And I'm going to play for you. I'm going to let you see the reactions of the people on the left here. But as all of this corruption comes out, we've got the most openly corrupt person who has ever run for president, who's ever run for most offices. I mean, this is like... Uh, this is worse than Tammany Hall. I mean, this is in-your-face corruption before she even gets elected. And I have to say to all these single women out here who are undyingly loyal to Hillary Clinton, would you vote for Al Capone if he was called Alice? That's what we're talking about here, right? You're going to look, overlook everything that this woman has done, overlook all the corruption because she's a woman. So if it was Alice Capone, I guess it would be okay. Or if instead of Bernie Madoff, maybe if it was Beatrice Madoff, that'd be fine. You know, just rip people off. Steal. Sell your office for money, for massive amounts of money. Now, this is the article here. Aides say that Bill Clinton was running Bill Clinton, Inc. And then the way the uh, Time Magazine headline says, Memo reveals tangled business and charitable ties. Tangled? Uh, how about uh, intermingled? How about RICO-level corruption? Yeah, they always soft-sell it. They say, well, it's kind of tangled, you know? They, they, they kind of tangled their personal income with the charity. You know, they put it out there saying they're doing this as a charity organization, yet it was their personal income. And then we have the Washington Post with a long article on this. Now, what they're saying is that the uh, Clinton Global Initiative, the uh, Clinton Foundation, Clinton Foundation was where Doug Band uh, hung out. But, you know, you see all these Clinton Global Initiative. You've seen the picture of uh, Jimmy Kimmel there in front of the uh, CGI with Hillary and Bill and Chelsea, you know, pushing that. You know, the guy that uh, uh, you know, made fun of the uh, pickle situation uh, that they had set up in order to help her. I, I think they ought to call it said the Clinton Global Initiative, it ought to be the Clinton Global Income, because that's what they're really getting. Uh, I want to play this clip before we go any further. Let's play this clip. This is Morning Joe, and they spent uh, at least 17 minutes talking about this. And I want you to hear the comments that Joe Scarborough points out. And, of course, Mika, Mika Brzezinski, uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski's daughter, the guy who masterminded uh, so much of the globalism that we're now facing, she doesn't say much in the clip that we've got, but I let, I let um, Joe Scarborough talk, and then I back this thing up, and I zoom in on Mika's face. And if you're watching this on video, you have to look at Mika's pained expression. She tries to talk for a moment, and then I think she can say something that's like, nah, there's just nothing I can say to try to walk this thing back, and she just stays silent. So I want to play this uh, clip. It's about a minute long. Let's do this uh, morning Joe clip. Really bragging about being able to shake down foundation clients for Bill Clinton money. He's, Doug Band is bragging about it. And it's not like Doug Band dreamed this up on his own. He was doing his boss's bidding. Now look at Mika. Watch Mika's expression. Bragging about being able to <laughs> shake down foundation clients. Oh, this hurts. This hurts. For Bill Clinton money. He's, Doug Band <laughs> is bragging about it. And it's not like Doug Band dreamed this up on his own. He was doing his boss's bidding. Mika Brzezinski, that look when your candidate is crashing and burning as her corruption and crimes are exposed. And that's the point. 
50 million in one instance, 66 million in another instance. And as he pointed out, they are bragging about the corruption. That's the whole point of this 12 page memo that Doug Ban wrote. Uh, actually, uh, 12 or 13 pages, depending on the, uh, I guess, uh, different sources uh, count it differently, depending on how they, what size font they use. But say pressing same donors like Coca Cola, Dow Chemical to provide personal income to the former president. They say, well, Republicans say it allowed corporations and other wealthy supporters to pay for entree to a popular former president and a one-time Secretary of State who is now the Democrat presidential nominee. See, this is the way the Washington Post puts it. No, it's not Republicans, Washington Post, who are saying this. It is Doug Band who is doing this. It's Doug Band saying that this is a pay for entree to the popular former president. And even the Washington Post... Two paragraphs down points out that it was not the one-time Secretary of State. She was Secretary of State when this happened. Here's their quote. They say the memo made public Wednesday by the anti-secrecy group WikiLeaks lays out the aggressive strategy behind lining up the consulting contracts and paid speaking engagements for Bill Clinton that added tens of million dollars to the family's fortune, including during the years that Hillary Clinton led the State Department. So here there are two paragraphs earlier. They say, well, uh, she was one time Secretary of State and he was one time president. No, it was while she was Secretary of State and they even admit it further down. And it is actually Doug Band who is saying this, not Republicans who are saying it. It's his own words. He's there bragging about it. That's why Mika Brzezinski is speechless and pain and so much pain as she's hearing this laid out. There's really not much she could say. Doug Ban called it Bill Clinton Inc. And he said we obtained, quote, in kind services for the president and his family for personal travel, hospitality, vacation, and the like. Now, how did Hillary Clinton respond to this? Well, guess what? She declined to comment. But her spokesman said this is material that was hacked by the Russians and WikiLeaks. Don't deny it. Don't talk about it. See, that's the strategy that you take when you have the forehead of a harlot, as the King James Bible would put it, right? Somebody who has been uh, so corrupt for so long that nothing makes them blush. That's Hillary Clinton. See, Donald Trump gets very upset when people criticize him falsely. He can't contain himself. He gets drugged down into defending himself into that narrative and gets off a message. Hillary Clinton doesn't have that problem. She could care less what you say about her. She doesn't have a conscience. She has been a criminal for so long that nothing you could point out that is true about her would even bother her. It's all true. She doesn't try to, to uh, defend herself. They also talk about, say, Ban described how uh, they helped expand a fruitful relationship with the Swiss bank UBS, introducing Bill Clinton to a top executive at a 2009 charity dinner. In the ensuing years, UBS upped its giving to the foundation, agreed to pay Bill Clinton for the speeches. UBS paid Clinton about $2 million in speaking fees between 2011 and 2015 for a series of appearances alongside fellow establishment member George W. Bush. They're all in it, folks. Donald Trump is the independent in this campaign. The Republicans won't give a, a dime to him, and they won't spend a dime to attack Hillary Clinton. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to go to our callers here in just a moment. And then the next segment... We've got a couple of videos to play for you. An encounter that uh, Trump had with a very rude reporter. Really put her in a place. Also, we have the full Michael Moore tape, which I think you really need to hear. And, of course, Michael Moore thinks that he's trolling the right wing, thinks that we're all going to go watch Trump land and be convinced. And, you know, I, I just have to say, Donald Trump fully, un um, rather, Michael Moore fully understands why people are voting for Donald Trump. He understands that we know that the system, that the elitists, that the globalists have destroyed our economic lives. But then he thinks that he's going to turn us around and get us to vote for the most corrupt person to ever run for office. <laughs> uh, absolutely no way. Michael, you're not going to fool us. Uh, we're not idiots on, on that respect either. Uh, let's go to our callers, uh, Mark in Oregon. Mark, go ahead. Well, hello, David. How are you? Doing good. David, uh, I'd like to comment very quickly on what you just mentioned about uh, Hillary. 
I'll be more specific in a moment, if I may. But I, I really want to give him the information to you that I think uh, will either make or break uh, the reality of the future uh, relative to whether Donald Trump gains the White House or not, whether he's the winner. Mm -hmm. um, Hillary Clinton uh, became involved at uh, her parents' direction when she was uh, about six years old, from the best I can gather from the documented evidence. Uh, into their own family's cremation of care ceremony. Of course, her father was the mafia don for the Jewish mafia in Chicago. It's all very interesting. Where, where's your source uh, on this? Because I haven't heard, uh, I haven't heard several of these things. Where, where, what's your source on that? Um, I, I listen to people such as David Rents, Alex. I can't separate that out right now, sure. but I okay. find them to be very good sources of information. Um, Today, she is turned into a person that has no conscience, as you mentioned. Right. Uh, what, what will just do a little extrapolation, you have the engineering mind, you understand that uh, she's going to go right to the direct wholesale destruction of the unwanted, uh, the irredeemables, the unpardonable uh, in this country. Oh, yeah, well, she's very vindictive, any, yeah. Yes. Now, David, as I mentioned, of course, you know it. Many of us know it. You have a degree in engineering. So I'm going to present this very logical to you uh, so that it will be just quick, concise, and succinct. Donald Trump cannot win the election unless the only vehicle which the dark side is employed to prevent him from winning the election and that being the phony polls are allowed to stand. That's right. They have to be disputed by Donald Trump is the most logical choice. Other people that would help, even Alex's organization or a conglomeration of organizations, to actually begin doing polls immediately, which are then publicized by the organization, and it will catch on into the media because Alex is a known, known quantity, and polls mean a lot. These polls have to be disputed, or they're going to be used as a basis for low expectations, which is already forming, that's the right. moralization of the Trump forces, the people who are for Mr. Trump. And, you know, Mark, we've yeah. already had documents that have been released where the Clintons are talking about how if we just oversample certain groups, then we can flip the polls. And we see that they are dramatically oversampling Democrats, for example, in many of these polls. And when you look at this, and they tell you that it's a scientific poll and it's got a margin of error of four points. And another one's got a margin of error of four points and they're 12 points apart. You've got to ask yourself What's going on with this? It doesn't add up. They can't both be scientific polls. And so we know that there's a lot of push polling going on out there. We know there's oversampling. There's all kinds of games that they're playing. I, I think there's a lot of metrics, Mark. You know, there was one that just came out today that was on the Drudge Report. Uh, Trump wins an election in a high school mock election. Those are usually pretty accurate reflections of what the parents are talking about, quite frankly. And this is in, in uh, Minnesota. This is Al Frankenland, where the high school students voted for Trump. What are we going to do about it, David? That, if, if nothing's done about it, if these phony polls are allowed to stand of the public's perception and the real polls are not put out there by the people of Trump, which are the, the unpardonables by the evil side in this country, because we're just the best there is in this country, and Donald Trump is the best of the best, he's going to lose. And the alternative media, the of course the mass media conglomerate that's putting these phony polls out, Nobody is focusing on the fact that on the good side, on our side, that legitimate polls have to be presented to the public, and it can be done through Donald Trump. He's already got his internal polling organization. It can be expanded into public well, revelation. I agree. I agree. And I, I, you know, we, we get the word out that they can rig the polls. We know from internal memos that they're talking about how they would rig the polls. And I even talked to Nigel Farage. He said the day of Brexit, we saw this happen all this, this year in Britain. The day of Brexit, they had their premier polling organization say that uh, Brexit had lost by 10 points. Didn't happen. So the message has to get out there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to go back to our callers in just one moment. Before we do, I want to remind you that we have sales on InfoWars Select Storable Food right now. 30 to 40% off. And, of course... Now is the time to store up, to uh, make sure that you get this before there's any price increases. We've got FEMA reports predicting up to 395% 
uh, price increases in food. They say that could trigger a massive unrest in the society. Of course it could. A uh, quadrupling of food prices. Of course, you can get it now. You can save it. It's got a shelf life of 25 years. And the time to stock up is when we have these sales. Right now, 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food at InfoWarsStore.com. All made in the USA, GMO-free, great packaging. Also, the ProPure Flagship filter, the 2.0 King Gravity Water Filter, is now on sale 30% off at InfoWarsStore.com. It filters and removes heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides, pharmaceutical drug contaminants, fluoride, and so many other things from your tap water. You can even filter water from lakes, rivers, and streams. You can go to InfoWarsStore.com. You can look at the water test lab results. Make your decision right now. 30% off ProPure G 2.0 King Gravity Water Filter. Let's go back to uh, Reggie in Arizona. I want to take one more call, and then I do want to make sure that we get to a couple of these clips here. Also, we've got uh, Judge Napolitano asking what happened to the FBI. And he goes through the uh, timeline in an essay here of what happened, why they didn't investigate Hillary Clinton. So I want you to hear what Judge Napolitano has to say about that. But first, let's go to Reggie in Arizona. Go ahead, Reggie. Hello, David. Hey, go ahead. Uh, uh, out here in Arizona, you know, it's all Trump. Wherever you go, it doesn't make any difference. And and it's very little percentage that he won't be our next president. But what I'm, my question is, if he is elected president in November here, and say it's officially through, will he have any kind of a authorization or poll to stop the corruption of Obama and the you know, illegal immigration and everything that he's trying. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of things that he can do. Look, he's got, the, it's the first time the Border Patrol has ever endorsed a candidate. They are sick and tired of the president and uh, his, um, uh, the people at the top of the Justice Department shutting down them enforcing the law. You have to understand that what's happening right now, it isn't that uh, you're going to have dueling executive orders. You've got Obama by executive order, telling people they cannot enforce the law. Right there in Arizona, you got Obama coming after Sheriff Arpaio, uh, going to lock up the sheriff who enforces the immigration rules, but allow the people who violate the immigration rules to go free. I mean, it's an upside-down system, and so absolutely there's a lot of things that he could do. You know, he's talked about cutting the bureaucracy uh, 75%, and people say, well, he can't do anything like that. You have to understand, I've reported on this before, the Congress continues to fund most of these bureaucratic agencies that are a law unto themselves. They operate as their own little personal fiefdoms, okay? They, they write their own, they write the law, we don't elect them. It's uh, legislation without representation, but they write the laws. They've got their own police forces, they've got their own courts, where, by the way, you are guilty until you prove you're innocent, because they say this is a a civil accusation, not a criminal accusation. So they play this little uh, fictional game that the Bill of Rights doesn't apply as long as it's a regulation that they say that you're violating. And of course they give people excessive fines, but these organizations throughout the bureaucracy of the District of Corruption are being, uh, are continuing, they're continuing being funded by the Congress, and yet the Congress is not re-upping, in many of these cases, their charters. So these people don't even have a legal authorization to operate, even though the Congress continues to fund them, even though the Congress abdicates its authority to these organizations. And so there's a lot that a president could do coming in. Um, I, I really do think that he could uh, do a great deal, Reggie. And I think he would put in a special prosecutor. I mean, he even said it in the second debate. He said, I'm going to put a prosecutor to come after you. <laughs> the guy to do it would be Rudy Giuliani. He wants a piece of Hillary Clinton as well. Thank you, Reggie. Uh, let's go to uh, Lisa in North Carolina real quickly. Lisa, go ahead. Yes, hey, uh, David, it's a privilege to talk to you. Well, thank you for calling. Okay, two quick things. Uh, previous caller, I've heard Larry Nichols say that Hillary was um, her father uh, and Dan Rostenkowski took over the mafia in Chicago, for what it's worth. Okay, all right. Okay, and secondly, what I'm calling about is I found a document on Dr. Uh, Steve Pachesnik's Mm -hmm. Twitter page, mm -hmm. and it's called uh, Salvage Plan, okay? Mm -hmm. And the, the um, letterhead has Benenson Group or whatever, and also the letterhead of Clinton Foundation on it. Okay. And uh, Benenson is the primary strategist for Hillary, 
And uh, I just wanted to know if it was real. It's a little scary. <laughs> uh, is that the one uh, say that they would do a false flag UFO situation? Or Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, I've had, uh, I haven't covered that because I've had people look at it and they say, well, the address is an old address, and yes, they have used this group, but the logo has changed and so forth and so on. I don't know. You know, it was interesting when we had the uh, the film contest here at InfoWars, we had somebody that got their entry in late, but if you remember, it was a really excellent film, and he, he had a Reagan speech. It was only maybe about a minute and a half, two minutes long. He had Reagan making a speech. He said, you know, the thing that would unify America, unify the world would be to have an alien invasion and so forth and so on. And, and they show a false flag alien attack. I, I don't know. I mean, certainly I wouldn't put anything past these people. The key thing is we don't want to have people that we know are corrupt, that people who have spent their entire life doing nothing but accumulating power and money ruthlessly, no matter what they had to do to get rid of the people that were in their way, we don't want people like that in office. If Americans are going to vote for people like that and put them in office, we're done. Like I said before, because she's a woman, we're supposed to give her a pass for this? You know, because she's Alice Capone instead of Al Capone, it's okay? You know, Bernice Madoff instead of Bernie Madoff? This, this is ridiculous. We don't want somebody like this in office. People should reject that. Uh, thank you, Lisa. I want to I want to point out, Al, before, since you brought this up, I've got a couple of other articles here. I didn't know if I'd have time to do it. This thing from WikiLeaks today, where they have the creep shots of Bernie relaxing by the pool in a swimming suit with, um, you know, uh, you know, putting this up and, and trying to shop that around to the media. You know, this type of thing, we see the Clinton team taking a picture that they think uh, might make Bernie Sanders look bad because, you know, it's an old guy in a bath uh, in a uh, bathing suit or whatever. It just makes the Hillary people look creepy. It doesn't make Bernie look creepy, right? Uh, but it's also the same types of things that we see uh, Hillary accusing other people of that she does. For example, not only were they going to put this out, this picture, to make him look bad. You know, he's got a, a, a baggy uh, uh, bathing suit on here. But then they also did this. They said, I wonder what Mike Bloomberg would think about all this. Bernie Sanders lounging at the elite Martha's Vineyard pool summer 2015 after helping raise money from Wall Street lobbyists. See? Hillary Clinton is Mrs. Wall Street. She has prostituted herself to these people on and beyond belief of what anybody has done. And yet she will take her character flaws and she'll take Bill Clinton's character flaws with women. And she'll protect, uh, project her issues with Wall Street onto Bernie Sanders. And she'll project her issues with uh, her husband's issues with women. And, of course, her issues as well. Project that onto Donald Trump. They accuse other people of doing what they do. And that's precisely what they did. And they got people to pick this up. They had uh, Perez Hilton put the photograph out. And they had uh, stories about Bernie Sanders attending fundraisers for Wall Street put out as well. They get what they want from the mainstream press. And then, of course, there's a story from Paul Joseph Watson on our site today, the WikiLeaks email, where you've got David Brock, uh, and, and they're going back and forth. They say, you know, hey... Uh, Clinton operative David Brock caused consternation within the campaign. We publicly claimed that Bernie Sanders didn't care about black people. Remember all this stuff? You know, she was fighting him for the black vote. And so uh, Brent Badaski was not very happy with what David Brock did. So he says, uh, Brock makes the cardinal mistake of those who bring politics into disrepute with voters. He tells a lie that people will know is a lie. So we know the Clintons are lying to us. You know, Michael Moore knows it, but he's going to vote for her anyway. All right. We know that you're lying to us, okay? You insult the intelligence of black voters with a kind of elitist racism that Bill and Hillary Clinton should not be seen with. I guess Brock's plan is that black voters are stupid and will not watch the ad and believe his lie. He says, I can't think of anything more desperate, more stupid, more self-destructive than David Brock. Lying about the Bernie ad, playing a seamy brand of politics of race using the tactic of deceit on her behalf. What do they do? All they've got is the politics of race. All they've got is to project their flaws onto other people. And in this particular case, their stupidity, they're projecting onto black voters. So she projects uh, her Wall Street connections onto Bernie. She projects Bill Clinton's hedonism and uh, rape onto Donald Trump. And then they project their stupidity onto black people. Projection. That's what they do. Now, let's take a look at the projection of CNN. Coming after Donald Trump today, uh, this is an article we have on Infowars.com. 
Uh, video, rude CNN reporter asked Trump why he's taking time off to open a hotel. Let's play that clip. There's, there's new audio tape of you talking about the fact that you really have relied on your uh, popularity and the fact that people come to your events and that helps you with free advertising. Is that what this was about? No, not at all. This was just under budget, ahead of schedule. That's what this is. Under budget, ahead of schedule. We built a hotel uh, that is going to be one of the great hotels of the world. It just opened today. It officially opens today. And we built it for less money than was anticipated. And we built it ahead of schedule by over a year. And if the country would do that, we would have a country that would be in much better shape than it's, you know, highways. They build highways for double and triple the cost. They build hospitals. And so to people who say you're taking time out of swing states to go do this, you say? I say the following. You have been covering me for the last long time. Uh, I did yesterday eight stops and three major speeches. And I've been doing this for weeks straight. I left here, I left there for an hour and a half. I'm going to North Carolina right now, then I'm going to Florida, I'm going up to New Hampshire. For you to ask me that question is actually very insulting because Hillary Clinton does one stop and then she goes home and sleeps. <laughs> uh, and yet you'll ask me that question. I think it's a very rude question, to be honest with you. And what I do is I want to back my children. My children work very hard, Ivanka in particular. And at the opening of the hotel, I want to back my children. Very important to me. Okay, so... Having a hotel that came in under budget, that he did it faster than they had anticipated, that's an accomplishment. When you run for president, you talk about your accomplishments. That's part of your campaign issues. And he pointed out he had eight stops the day before, three major events, tens of thousands of people when the uh, Clintons can't get more than a couple hundred people. You, know, you got that reporter saying, well, I think there's maybe a thousand people here. No, it's not. Now, you've, if you go regularly to a church and you look at a crowd, you, you know that's about uh, two or 300 people max, not 1,000 people there. Uh, but it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. They don't have anything to say when Hillary takes an entire week off to prepare for a debate each time. CNN doesn't have anything at all to say about that. So he's right. That was ridiculous. It was insulting. Uh, I want to get to this Michael Moore video. Because we played a little bit of this yesterday, and, and Alex and uh, Paul Joseph Watson and uh, Joe Biggs all talked about this. I want you to hear this, and I want you to hear the full four minutes of this. And Michael Moore is laughing. He says, hey, you know, uh, uh, Trump has put this out, and all these guys put that. You don't realize that uh, I don't support you guys, and we've gotten about 8 million views. That's going to sell a lot of my little uh, mockumentary uh, Trump land. It's like, no, you're not selling us anything, Michael. You, know, you have identified the reality here. You have uh, a great speech, quite frankly. I mean, it is like something out of John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath. You know, Michael, we know where uh, we know the vineyard uh, where the grapes of wrath were stored, and we know where they were grown as well. We know about this elitist game that's being played by the globalists. We know all about that. And you're right. We're pretty angry about it. And if we don't get Trump, we're going to give a big F you to the rest of the system in one way or the other. It's going to change. But for you to put this out, you understand this. And you can look at all this stuff as an anthropologist. I'm going to play the full tape here. You can look at it from an anthropological standpoint. And, uh, you know, I, I remember there was a movie called The Apostle. And it had Robert Duvall in it. One of my favorite films. I, th I thought it was really good. It shows you a guy who's got big character issues. Okay. But he also has a passion for God in this, in this movie. And in the additional supplemental material that's on the DVD, somebody uh, talked, to, uh, uh, talked to him about it, and he had a lot of Christians that were there with him. He says, yeah, I saw a couple of guys get saved on the set and everything. And they asked, are you a Christian? Oh, no, no, no. I don't, you know, he could take a very uh, detached view of this whole phenomenon. He looked at it as like a... Uh, uh, an anthropo anthropological phenomenon that was from the South and uh, Christianity and whatever. He could look at it from a distance, uh, at arm's length, and he could say, yeah, that's kind of interesting, but I, you know, I'm not going to get involved. With it. it doesn't make it not real, whether or not he appreciates it or not, and whether or not Michael Moore uh, appreciates what's going on. He can look at this anthropological phenomenon, okay, and he does understand the anger that people have. And so let's play this for you, because what he has to say here is very eloquent, even though he wants to try to use this 
ultimately against Trump. Let's play what he has to say. Donald Trump came to the Detroit Economic Club and stood there in front of the Ford Motor executives and said, if you close these factories as you're planning to do in Detroit and build them in Mexico, I'm going to put a 35% tariff on those cars when you send them back and nobody's going to buy them. It was an amazing thing to see. No politician, Republican or Democrat, had ever said anything like that to these executives. And it was music to the ears of people in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, the Brexit states. That's right. That's we right. Live here in Ohio, Brexit you states. know what I'm talking about. Whether Trump means it or not is kind of irrelevant because he's saying the things to people who are hurting. And it's why every beaten down, nameless, forgotten working stiff who used to be part of what was called the middle class loves Trump. He is the human Molotov cocktail that they've been waiting for. The human hand grenade that they can legally throw into the system that stole their lives from them. And on November 8th, Election Day, although they've lost their jobs, although they've been foreclosed on by the bank, next came the divorce and now the wife and kids are gone. The car's been repoed. They haven't had a real vacation in years. They're stuck with the Obamacare bronze plan where you can't even get a Percocet. <laughs> They've essentially lost everything they had except one thing. The one thing that doesn't cost them a cent and is guaranteed to them by the American Constitution, the right to vote. They might be penniless, they might be homeless. They That's might right, we're going to play the rest of that when we come back. Let's uh, play the rest of that when we come back. He's pointing out that we got one thing left. You know, you look at these tens of thousands of people who show up at the Trump uh, rallies. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, these people who show up for Hillary Clinton with their little uh, million dollar uh, soirees. We've got more people on our side. We'll be right back. I'm David Knight, and I want to finish this Michael Moore clip that he's using to promote his uh, movie Trumpland. You know, uh, Donald Trump Jr. tweeted out, he says, I probably don't agree with him on a lot, but Michael Moore gets this one right 100% and retweet it. And I think that's right. I think people should hear this clip that Michael Moore has. You have to understand that Michael Moore is too tribal. Let's just put it that way. He's too tribal to uh, ever vote for anybody that has a Republican label or that comes as an independent. He is the Democrat tribe, first, last, and always. And he doesn't care if these people destroy our lives and sell us down the river. He doesn't care if Hillary Clinton is hopelessly corrupt. He laughs at it and he goes, hey, Trump Jr. in the right wing thinks my movie called Trumpland is pro-Trump. Ha ha, please don't tell them otherwise. Yeah, they got about 8 million uh, views on this thing. And it should have a lot of views. Because what he says in this four-minute clip is exactly true. I want to play the rest of this before we run out of time. Let's play, uh, pick it up about halfway through. Let's go ahead. The one thing that doesn't cost them a cent and is guaranteed to them by the American Constitution, the right to vote. They might be penniless. They might be homeless. They might be f***ed over and f***ed up. It doesn't matter because it's equalized on that day. A millionaire has the same number of votes as the person without a job. One. And there's more of the former middle class than there are in the millionaire class. And there's a lot more Trump supporters so and will win if they don't steal the election. That's right. The dispossessed will walk into the voting booth, be handed a ballot, close the curtain, and take that lever or felt pen or touchscreen and put a big f***ing X in the box by the name of the man who has threatened to upend and overturn the very system that has ruined their lives. Donald J. Trump. They see that the elites who ruin their lives hate Trump. Corporate America hates Trump. Wall Street hates Trump. That's right. The career politicians hate Trump. The media hates Trump after they loved him and created him. And now hate him. Thank you, media. The enemy of my enemy is who I'm voting for on November 8th. Yes, on November 8th, you, Joe Blow, Steve Blow, 
Bob Blow, Billy Blow, Billy Bob Blow, all the blows get to go and blow up the whole system because it's your right. Trump's election is going to be the biggest you ever recorded in human history. And it will feel good. It will feel real good. Gonna so enjoy pushing that button or lever or whatever I've got. You know, he talks about all these Joe Blows gonna blow the system up. You know, it's really the Joes. I mean, go back to the Grapes of Wrath, right? All these people who were in the Depression were fleeing because of the Dust Bowl. You know, the Dust Bowl was a natural disaster. The Rust Bowl, however, which is where he began, the shutting down of our industry in Detroit and other places, the Rust Bowl, that is a man-made crisis. It's a manufactured crisis, manufactured by all these people he just talked about. Wall Street, the media, the professional politicians, and on and on. We know precisely who did it. We know precisely why they did it. We know where they're going with this, and so does Donald Trump. And so it isn't just an F you to the establishment. It's a way we're going to change the direction of this country. Join us tonight for the InfoWars Nightly News, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm David Knight.